All right, here's a fact for about 85% of you, probably more, the best strength training workout to build muscle, strength, of course, help with fat loss, all of that is probably a full body workout three days a week. One exercise per body part, three sets. It's a fact. Most of you will do best on a routine that resembles something like that. I remember when we used to hammer this the whole time. That well, was, this was like like at least 50% of the conversation on the show I, when yeah. we first started. The People podcast. were so attached to the bro split. Well, I mean. just there's just so much confusion out there. Um, but it's funny. I, I read an article where they were asking some top strength coaches, um, some of the top strength coaches in the world, and they all agreed that, yeah, about 85% of people will do best on a routine that looks something like this. And if you're watching this and listening to this, this is probably you. And if you're thinking this is not me, there's 85% chance it is you. Mm -hmm. Most people do best on a routine like this. Uh, you, you know, We're talking about a small percentage of people that should train differently most of the time. So in other words, most of you with strength training should train something like this most of the time. It doesn't mean you don't move outside of it, but most of the time, this is what your workout. Do you know why like. this is so difficult and why we have continued to repeat it and why even myself was challenged with moving into here? When you do the lots of volume from one body part type of deal, you get a good pump, you sweat. Um, it's just uh, maybe people get addicted to that feeling. Uh, that would be my guess. I think um, I think we can agree that there's a a small percentage of people that this works really well for. And there's a, obvious examples of that. You can there's plenty of uh, pro bodybuilders oh, who yeah. train this way and uh, have shared this is how they train. And so there's obviously, that's an example of extreme success with that way of training. And I think that somebody like me as a young kid trying to build muscle identified as, as that person. Yeah. And even if I didn't think that I was the genetic anomaly as that person, I wanted to be that person. Therefore, this is what I should, mm -hmm. I should follow. And this is the best routine for me. And then you add in the other layers to that of like, Oh, I get this massive pump and I, Oh my God, I'm so sore. Cause I did, mm -hmm. you know, 20 sets for my biceps, you know? And so mm -hmm. that feedback loop of all that, I think just confirms that bias. It took me a really long time to, to switch over to a full body, like routine and adopt that because I think I, I identified so hardly with the, the, the bodybuilder guy who, who would preach the split is the well, way to go. Do you think too, though, that, uh, commercial gyms were pretty much structured for more of a split routine yes. and that was like a part of the culture of like going to the gym. It kind of became like, this is sort of the, the program that most people do in this. That's in a this really setting. interesting point, Justin. He's he's hundred percent. He is because they, they, they section them all that way. I've yeah. never actually really thought about that before. Well, That's think a really about interesting point. Listen, when you do a full body routine, like I said, right. One exercise per body part, three sets each, you know, you're going to your workout. You're like, okay, I'm going to do legs. Okay. Next is chest. Next is back. Next is shoulders. You have one exercise to pick when you do it. Uh, that way, the exercise you pick is probably going to be some kind of a basic compound movement, right? If I only have one exercise to do for shoulders, there's 50,000 shoulder exercises, but I'm probably going to do an overhead press, right? Or I'm probably going to do an upright row or something like that, right? I'm probably not going to do a cable this or a machine that, right? And so gyms, uh, they're organized around body part splits because you've got 10 different machines for biceps, 10 different machines for legs, 10 different machines for back. Right. But if I go in there doing one exercise, I'm probably not going to pick one of those machines. Maybe sometimes, but most of the time, I'm probably going to move over the barbell mm -hmm. and do a basic exercise. So you're absolutely right. And, and, and gyms were heavily influenced by the bodybuilding community because they're the ones that did strength training. So it was like marketed people going to the gym. That's so, right. In yeah. fact, it was so they're so heavily influenced by bodybuilding that when we were in gyms, they didn't have – Squat racks. They didn't have power racks because that was like powerlifting mm -hmm. and Olympic lifting and bodybuilders kind of shied away from those lifts. I mean, when I was managing gyms in the late nineties, you know, you're talking about big gyms, right? 40,000 square foot, very busy, big box gyms. We had in an entire gym, one squat rack, one, and it had dust on it. Nobody used it because, uh, everybody followed kind of how bodybuilders trained back then, which was like leg press and stuff like that. CrossFit actually is what brought all those lifts back and now everybody's rediscovering yeah, them. They disrupted it's it super sure. effective. Exercises. I mean, to your point of choosing one exercise and you would choose a better exercise. I think part of the challenge of that is I don't think people really grasp that. Like I wish we had a study that showed, and this would be really difficult to parse this out. So I understand why we don't have one. This is where you just have to trust people with experience. 
I think that people don't understand uh, the value of a, say, a barbell or dumbbell shoulder press compared to a machine lateral raise. Yeah. If they knew, if you if you could go like this, like here's you doing, uh, you know, shoulder press with the barbell uh, ten times, you know, over the course of let's say two months or whatever that, you know, ten times in a workout. Here's that same person uh, instead of doing that, doing a lateral raise and be able to measure the amount more muscle. Right. That, like they knew how dramatic of a difference it was to choose yes. exercises like that as far as like the ROI was on it. I think that would be an easier sell. I think people just think, oh, I'm doing shoulders. They burn. It's a pump. I'm sore. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm getting equal amount of value from that. Or I got to hit that part of the head. Therefore, it's, I, you know, I'm neglecting it if I'm focusing on just a press. Like, I think that people don't realize those compound lifts when you think about return on your investment, investment would be your time and effort, right? So the time and effort put towards five sets of that, trying to compare it to like, you don't even realize. So and why I'm saying that is because these splits, when you do these splits and this, to, this is what took me a while to register was that, you know, when you do a split, you normally choose three, four exercises for a muscle group. Yep. Mm -hmm. And really in that workout, 90% might be a stretch, but 80, 90% of the value of that shoulder workout came in the first two exercises. Yeah. yeah. 80 to 90%. Mm -hmm. The other 10%, maybe 20% of them really lucky and effective came from the other three or four. That's hard to wrap well, your brain around. If you're going to do yeah. nine sets in a week uh, for a body part um, and you divided it over three workouts, you know, so that's the one exercise you're doing that day. You're going to pick the most effective ones, and they tend to be the hardest, right? They tend to be the ones that require the most energy, the most concentration and stabilization. Like a standing shoulder press takes a lot out of you in comparison to a seated machine lateral, right? But if you do all nine sets in the same workout, well, now it makes sense. I'm not going to – by the time I get to this, you know, sixth set – I'm like, I'm not going to do standing overhead press. I, I got to go do something that's easier where I'm sitting down and the machine's kind of guiding the weight. So so the workout starts to look different. The other thing is on a long-term basis, uh, another reason why full body workouts are supreme is because long-term, if you miss a workout here or there, which you're going to do over the course of a year, okay, you're going to miss more than one or two. You're going to miss quite a bit over the course of a year. You end up not missing an entire body part. You just you, you end up hitting that same body part again two other times that week. You miss one workout. It's okay. I got two more workouts where I'm working the whole body. Whereas if I miss a Tuesday, my legs don't get hit at all uh, that week or whatever. So there's that factor. Uh, there's the factor of uh, you know doing the best exercises, practicing them often. Um, the enemy of strength is fatigue. That's another thing. So if I'm doing the same body part for an entire hour, like fatigue's going to set in. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing that same body part, but I'm dividing that that workload over three workouts, fatigue isn't as big of a factor. And now I'm training more strength. So you'll see more strength gains. You'll see more muscle gains. You're you're better off long term. You're practicing and doing the best exercises. You're leaving all the other ones um, out of the workout typically. And, and for most people, it's been, now, now the 85% that I give, you, there's a couple ways you can look at that. One way is you probably fall in that category. The other one is, well, I'm real consistent. 85% mm -hmm. of the time that I train during the year should be like this. The other 15% can look like the split. Some people stuff. need hypertrophy training. That's right. Yeah. And I and I think too, the, the biggest thing, I think, yeah, Adam kind of touched on this was the burn. Like I think that's like psychologically so tough because if you're now switching over into a total body type of a format like you're not going to feel that like intensive direct burn on on the muscle you know you're going to get a louder signal you're going to you know be able to load more substantial but uh, people don't get that immediate feedback like they do when they're like hyper focused on individual muscle groups and and speaking to your fatigue point this is also part of the reason why like people might be able, like how does he come up with some arbitrary number like the other three exercises are only 10 or 20 percent of the value well, part of it is because they're an inferior exercise. The other part is you're so fatigued from the two good ones before yeah, it yeah. that you're. So it's not that's how I come up with that. It's not like I'm saying that a, you know, a shoulder barbell shoulder press is, you know, 90 percent better than this one. Actually, no, it's not just that. It's that you gave most of your energy. We all you guys have seen the studies around prioritizing the, the exercise yeah. you prioritize in the front of the workout yeah. is it's the biggest bang. So there's it. there's your research to support that argument. And then you add in the fact that you're now fatigued 
and you're doing a a you're doing a lesser exercise, a lesser valuable exercise, and you're fatigued. It's like that's where you come up with like this thing's only it's only moving the needle five or ten percent. You'd be far better off doing that exercise three times a week, you know, and, and spreading that volume out over three days yep. versus doing it one I, day really hard. And I'll make even look. I'll, I'll make more argument because there's studies that show if the volume is controlled, maybe it doesn't make a difference. There's other studies that lean towards. What we're saying, when you ask strength coaches and trainers, most of them are going to agree with what we say because you have some experience, um, you know, put in there. But you know, when when you work out in this way, you, you feel better, you get stronger, uh, more consistently, and then you can move out of it here and there. But go back to this style of training, and this is when you're going to get, uh, you know, the best result. I, I look, this just happened to me. Like I I went to kind of a body part split for a little while, was focusing on the pump and hypertrophy and. You know, I, I rode that for as long as I could, went back to full body and boom, literally, literally stronger by the second workout, literally stronger by the second workout of the week, which to me says one thing. I stayed too long in the yeah. other workout. Yeah. I stretched out uh, uh, just for, you know, for as long as I possibly could. Yeah. But it also helps. Look, I also believe that, and we know we, there's some data that shows that you have this and everybody knows this through experience, right? You, you do an exercise most of the muscle building effect is localized uh, to the area that you're training. So if I do an overhead press, the muscles that get the most of that are going to be the ones that are uh, involved in the lift primarily, right? Shoulders, some triceps, maybe some stabilizers, but mostly shoulders and triceps. But there is a systemic muscle building si signal uh, that we tend to see. And there's, there's data on this, right? There's studies where people will have an arm that's incapacitated and they'll measure atrophy, right? Muscle shrinking after a certain period of time. And they'll take two groups. One group does nothing. The other group works out the arm that's not incapacitated. So my left arm is in a cast and then they go work out the right arm. And what they find is the left arm, the one that's incapacitated, loses less muscle in the group of people that does right arm exercises versus the other group that does nothing. What that tells us is there's also this kind of systemic muscle building effect. Most of it's local. But there is this kind of whole body effect. Now, tell me what kind of a workout is going to send a louder overall muscle building signal? One where I'm doing chest or one where I'm doing chest, back, shoulders, biceps, triceps, triceps legs, legs. Yeah. right? Yep. You're going to get a louder overall muscle building signal. And in my experience training people, uh, th this seems to be true. They don't just... Yeah. Build more muscle. The whole Every, orchestra versus a few instruments. Everything tends to do better when people train this way across the board. So for most people, this is the way to train. It's not as sexy. It doesn't seem as cool or as complicated. And yes, there's much more to programming than what I'm saying. But for for most of you, like this is the way that you should work out. Most of you would do good with two days a week, uh, full body. Yeah. Um. You know, and some of you three days a week, and everybody, you know, very very few of you. We'll do better doing anything else if, if, if muscle gain and strength is your goal. Today's oh. giveaway is MAPS Anabolic to enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, we have a sale this month. MAPS Bands and MAPS 40 Plus, both 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Have you guys heard uh, now you know, that the dust is all settled. Like we kind of knew that like glutathione was something that they found is like people had some deficiency in for COVID and, oh. you know, transmission. If we're looking back at this now retroactively, uh, I actually was, was reading an article and then I watched this video and this lady was like presenting this case in court that they actually had produced all these, uh, you know, uh, studies and articles around, the fact that bifidobacteria was a major factor for whether or not you transmitted COVID or did poorly with it. And that too was like, because kids naturally have this and aren't deficient in this. And later on as adults really uh, grow up that, yeah, you, you did you know this? Uh, well, I, he sent me the study. I took oh, a look I didn't at know it. Yeah. yeah. So to, to be able to, uh, you know, proactively, I guess, um, like, uh, I know seed, has like a lot of bifidobacteria uh, in their different strains yep. that, that you can, um, you know, use as a probiotic. I think they call it symbiotic, but um, you you take that proactively and and replenish your body, and you're much more resilient to these these type of viruses. So you so was this new? Is this new? Okay, so with COVID, we, yes. So yeah, that's what well, I mean. Yeah, so they well, saw like that. it was suppressed, which is really frustrating because oh, it, it's been out there. 
Uh, but like it, it's just totally been buried. So super, you, so super. Sorry, I know you want to go here, but I'm just so curious about what you read. So is this uh, also like, um, like is it? Do, do they attribute that to being a ma one of the major factors of like why people got it and like why children didn't get it? Children, yes, because obviously that was a big question, right? Why is this? Why is it not deadly for children? For yes. you know, 99 per percent of them or she like broke that? down a really uh, a strong case for it. That's one of the reasons. There's also the the um, yeah. There's a few factors. There's also some receptors uh, that adults have uh, the ACE two receptor. I want to. I, I I might be getting this wrong. That adults have more of um, than children. But um, we've known for a long time that the bifidobacteria helps in the in the healing or avoiding or transmitting of any respiratory disease. Now, COVID obviously was a respiratory disease, for sure. so they tested it with. They found that with people with high, good levels of bifido are far less likely to have severe forms uh, wow. of COVID. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So bifidobacteria. I so check this out, Justin. So. There's there's two major strains. There's variants of these strains, right? But there's two major strains that we know that are beneficial for health. There's the bifido uh, class the of bacteria, lactobacillus. and then lactobacillus. Yeah. So bifido we know um, helps with immune response, blood pressure, inflammatory response. It helps with autoimmune issues. Eczema is a, is a big one with bifido. Lactobacillus. Very similar um, types of, uh, of issues uh, can help with uh, inflammation, can help with uh, certain types of anxiety. So we know that these two strains of bacteria have lots of, uh, of benefits. So if you get any probiotic, they almost always will carry one of these types of strains or both of them. Seed has many different types of bifidobacterium and lactobacillus. Mm -hmm. And of course, seed is the only probiotic I know of that will demonstrate that their yeah. capsule will make it through the digestive tract and deliver the bacteria where it's supposed to go a lot more targeted to each system of the body too yeah which is really cool yeah i mean you know the more you look at um the more they they discover about these bacteria that are in our gut and our skin um the the more fascinating it, it becomes oh, i mean yeah. we have more we're so affected by it we're more bacteria than we are human cells. You know that we have more bacteria cells yeah. alive in us and on us um, than human cells, and they have they influence a lot of things, including our behaviors, mm -hmm. uh, either to promote their their uh, their their lives, their growth, yeah, to, to to give you like cravings for specific things that they want to feed off. They've of. learned how to influence their host yeah. in, in in different ways, and some bacteria just have benefits for us. Others can obviously. Um, cause problems. So it's really fascinating. So yeah, probiotics done right for most people. Um, it's like, this is becoming, especially today, this is becoming one of those supplements that I'm closer and closer to saying is a, like a necessity. Almost like a multivitamin. Yeah. Like I would think so. Yeah. Even a multivitamin, you know, I say is a good, is, is a good value, but if you don't have any nutrient deficiencies, I don't think you need a multivitamin. Yeah. But who is that? But well, yeah, I know. That's why I'm saying like uh, multivitamins up there. Uh, our microbiome is so altered uh, because of uh, exposure to so many things that uh, that you know antibiotics, uh, glyphosates, um, you know environmental toxins. Like when they measure the 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 bacteria in babies, every generation is becoming less and less diverse uh, because you get it from your mother. Mm. It's really crazy. But yeah, the the bifido for, for like if you if you're ill or you're getting respiratory illness. Besides making sure you don't you're not lacking nutrients like vitamin D, um, or you know glutathione was one for COVID they saw, like take a probiotic, you yeah. know that'll yeah. make a, a really big difference. Big difference. How yeah. how how uh, negative do you or how bad do you think like uh, super processed fake food and the stuff that's in that and fake food is causing like like unhealthy gut in in people microbiomes? I think it has a huge impact because the processed foods tend to lack the types of fibers and pre what are called prebiotic compounds that feed uh, healthy bacteria. So your gut bacteria will start to reflect uh, what you eat. For example, this is one example. If you eat a ketogenic diet always, your yeah. your gut bacteria starts to change yeah. and it starts to reflect that you eat you know a ketogenic diet. Right, right. So processed foods for sure. Wow. For sure, we'll, we'll affect that. I asked because I saw this clip and this reel, and I haven't had the time to fact check. So maybe uh, Doug or Andrew could look at this, but I was fascinated by it because I totally remember eating it as a kid. In fact, I don't think it was that long ago when I had one uh, at, at some family event or whatever like that. 
But you know those famous, they come in the blue box, drumstick ice creams yeah. with the peanuts? We've uh, all had do them. Do I know? Yeah, we've all had them, right? Yeah. They're, the, they're the best. Supposedly, that is not ice cream. What is it? Oh, And supposedly, man. they can leave that out 24 hours yeah, on no. the counter and cut it still, and it still be solid, not melt at all. It's not ice cream? I, yes. What and is then it? They, <laughs> they call it a frozen dairy dessert. Yes. Frozen dairy. And That's the reason why is because it's not even it's not even ten percent. Oh no! Is it dairy though? It's not it's even ten percent ice cream. No, 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 no. Listen to this, bro. Jealous, ice cream jealous. is made from milk, solids, or fats, while frozen dairy desserts like drumsticks can oh, use vegetable, vegetable oil oh, or vanaspati. What the hell is that? <laughs> They also contain more emulsifiers in ice cream, which are chemical additives that help the dessert keep its structure and prevent it from melting. Well, you just crushed me right now. Dude, <laughs> I saw this uh, clip. I've been lying to you. And it know. was a Joe Rogan clip. Uh, I couldn't tell like if it was modified or not, so I was like, that's why I wanted to make sure this was fact-checked. But I thought it was oil? so interesting. They, they can't even, you know that legally, because uh, FDA will not allow them to call it ice cream. So they can't even call it ice cream. So nowhere on the box does it say it's an ice cream. Yeah. So it's a frozen dessert, uh, real small in the bottom right-hand corner of it. And it's because not even 10% of it is connected to ice cream. You have to have a certain <laughs> yeah. amount of milk fat in it in order Dude, to that's, call it that. That's just gross. Is that crazy or yeah. what? And yeah. I didn't know that you could leave that sucker on you the know, counter and it would still be stable. The first time I realized Dang. they did something like that was Easter years ago. Uh, I bought, I was buying a, like a chocolate bunny for one of my God, my, my God children. And I looked at it and I laughed and I said, huh, that's funny. It says chocolate flavored candy. Why don't they just call it chocolate? And then I went, wait a minute. And I looked at the ingredients. I'm like, <laughs> there's no chocolate. It's not either. chocolate. It's chocolate flavored candy. Does he have cocoa? No, I, dude. Probably, like, oh, you, no. You, you read that up there, Sal? Look at look the at hell? the definition of this. This is what's so crazy. I had so the, obviously it's not the only culprit, but I had no idea about this. Yo, what is Vana Spotty? It doesn't sound healthy. Can you Google Vana Spotty? <laughs> that sounds like a. It's capitalized, so it's like a like brand. A isn't that isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah what is Vana? What is Vana that? Spotty. Open that up. Uh, fully or partially hydrogenated vegetable cooking oil. Wow, that's disgusting. Nasty. Right. Yeah. right? Wow. It's, it's so. And we're okay. just plowing these down, giving them to our kids all day it's long. A hydra no big deal. Hydra it's hydrogenated vegetable fat that is used as a butter substitute in India. That's also that's also could be like like margarine. Yeah, it's yeah, I like that. Oh, oh god, the margarine of ice cream. Crazy. That sucks. Crazy, right? Didn't McDonald's that's, that's do that so that their ice cream wouldn't freeze? I heard that. Didn't their soft serve? Their soft serve right? not being a real yeah real ice cream. Wasn't I mean, that like a big well, point I mean, of contention? Now it makes me think of that. It probably for sure is right. I mean that's why they probably call well, it soft serve and they don't call it ice cream. Have you ever seen it when it's like melted or somewhat? It's no. just like. Like gelatinous, oh. it's just not. It, 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 it that's how this. This how this, you know so they sucks? show people that were leaving these drumsticks out, and then it, it's like, it's not melted, but it's not fully salt. It's, it's like it doesn't gooey. look. Yeah, yes, it's like a weird goo pile. Yes. You know what sucks about all of this is is now that because I haven't had a drumstick in years, but as a kid, I was like my favorite, right? Yeah. Um, that and the strawberry shortcake ones. Remember those? The pink uh, popsicles with the straw. I know a lot of kids don't like that. I used to love those. Pink popsicle ones? You ever seen those? No. They're like strawberry I mean, shortcake. You know what I used to like? The, oh, the cheese. It's like a push pop. You know the, no. Uh, it's, it's, it's like pink, but it's got it's covered in like, I don't know what they're using. We it's used like to eat the ones, or something. Or the, the, the poor kid ones, right? The ones that came in the little cups with the wood spoon. And the, <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. The strawberry the and vanilla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are those the pork? I can still ones? taste the spoon. I, yeah. <laughs> can you? Can you? I can taste yeah. the spoon too right yeah. now. And it had the strawberry and the chocolate flavor. Like, yeah. oh man, we yeah. were we were uh, doing yeah. things when no, we had so that I'm, in the house. So, yeah, see, McDonald's soft serve is not real ice cream. So uh, I have fond memories of how delicious drumsticks were, but now I'm realizing it was engineered palatability. Yes. <sighs> It's so and it's hard to beat engineered palatability. It's crazy. You know what I mean? bet if we go down this rabbit hole, we'd be able to find a lot. Hold of Hold on. These Next foods. thing yes. you're gonna tell me is that chicken and a biscuit crackers don't have chicken in them. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like don't I'm tell just, me. I'm just, just gonna take a wild shot and just say Netflix. probably it doesn't, bro. bro. <laughs> dude, that, that, that was my favorite. Dude. I, I love those too. That was my I love favorite those crackers. Too. I mean, those, those are like they I mean, mastered that in like Doritos. So here, this is actually kind of an interesting or good conversation, I think, for the audience to hear because I also. Also remember this transition in my life of where I moved away from. I mean, there was, for a very long time, even as a personal trainer, I still very much so ate McDonald's and Taco Bell yeah. and Carl, like all that stuff yeah. like that. 
And when you are in it, right, when that is uh, a part of the diet, right, that's something you eat consistently, something uh -huh. that your palate has 100% adapted to that. Of course. And the thought of breaking that out oh. is really difficult, like, yeah. which is wild to me thinking where I am at now with my nutrition and how long I've been eating healthy Listen. 90 plus percent of the time. Those foods destroy me. Yeah. And that's like, you just don't realize it because your body's become adapted to taking in all this fake stuff. And if you actually just moved away from it for a period of time, you would be able to see very clearly yeah. how your body, like when it, it, it digests, that's uh -huh. how it feels. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Fast food bacteria. Yeah. Yes. Like you're, you're, you're completely populated yeah. and, and for those cravings. They're like little fat bacteria. Yeah. They're like, yeah. <laughs> Carl's <laughs> Jr. again, on, right? They're on, they're on like Lark scooters, you know? <laughs> Fat bacteria, yeah. dude. It's Wally World in here. Okay, dude. so here another fact, check. Doug. This is for you. Okay, it's a Japan thing. I I heard Japan has a fat tax. Never heard that. Google like, that like for they me. Tax fat people or fat businesses. And food? Supposedly that your your a company has an average weight, and if you go up a certain no percentage, way. the company gets. No way. No way. That's hilarious. Look no at way. waistline and weight targets. <gasps> What? It's wow. so the way I the way I read it was if it's you, called the Metabo Law. If you're <laughs> as a as a as a company <laughs> average, if you're if it goes Metabolo. up a certain percentage, your company gets taxed. Wow, you dude. know what's funny about this right here? That's really. Funny. I'm gonna piss off some people. Yeah. This is right. Okay, so you know that like the 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 religious. You didn't know that, huh, Doug? You, I did not know that. You know the religious climate change people, right? Yeah, like, yeah. oh, you, dude, everything is gonna kill us, and you know your car, throw your car, whatever. Yeah. I, and I've done this before. I've, I've gotten people who are really annoying with this. And I say to them, I said, are you eating more food than is yes. necessary? Yeah. Because you are, you your are harming the environment. And huge. it looks like you're, yeah. you're, you've, you you're, you're producing your a lot of carbon because you're a good 50 pounds. They don't want to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So what if you wrapped in a climate to save the climate law? Oh God. And made it so that if you were overweight, you had to pay extra carbon tax. Yeah. I bet people. If you're, if you're worried about the the cow farts, you should really. The law requires you know. employers and local governments to annually measure the waistlines of citizens between the ages of 40 and 75. They uh, they must ensure at least 65 percent participation, and those who don't meet the targets receive a counseling and incentivized to lo uh, incentives What's to lose weight. What's the counseling? It's the shaming. They just come <laughs> yeah. at, uh, point, point at people. Sounds, employers oh, who don't meet so their employees' targets may face fines, such as NEC Japan's largest personal computer maker. Which could have been fined up to nineteen million dollars. Oh my god! Wow, it reduced. Look at this. The law reduced Japan's obesity rate to three and a half percent, which is one of the lowest rates in the world. It was no, no, no. It reduced it around three and a half percent, not two. No, two. No. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, reduced Japan's obesity rate two. Oh, wow. So it is the you know. So Japan is the lowest. You know that? Yeah, right? they were they yeah, were already yeah. pretty. So yeah. that's that's interesting. They had healthier yeah. eating habits. To I can't believe with, I got you in a Japan thing. You didn't that's know. That's funny. Well, I know. I don't know a lot about. Uh, Japan, were you okay? Honestly. What years were you there? Were you were you there Dude, at the time? Was it before? In the nineties. So. Oh, so it was before. Okay, so I feel this like is two thousand eight. Oh, okay. I feel like I've seen a park where they had like these. Um, uh, it was like. Almost like there were structures that you could walk through, and you could just barely walk through based upon your your body size. And so they would like evaluate like how obese or fat you were based off if you could fit through these. Really, you know what's you know what's crazy. Yeah, so there's a lot like of ways. Of the... There's a lot of ways you could rationally. I would never support them. So I'm I'm a very. Okay, I was gonna ask you guys. Like, no, you, I'm you... a very. You guys, I'm a very free market person. But rationally speaking, an airline could do this. They could charge you by how much you weigh. Yeah, but so, because wait, it costs them money. How, to wait, how is this not? How is this not okay? If it's a tax, you're it's it's still free market. I mean, you're no. just being taxed. You have the choice to not. No, eat. no, 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 no. Tax is forced. I'm mm. saying if a company came out and said, "Hey, we're going to charge you based on your weight," which they would never allow because they would consider it discriminatory, uh, that would make sense. But I would never support it. How is that different? Because a tax is forced. You can choose to go to a different company. That's competitive, and the company's private. They could tell you, "We don't want you on the plane," or we'll charge you more because you you cost more gas. So it's government enforced. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. you don't have an option. No, I think tax breaks make us make sense. I think if you're that fit and like. healthy, so I like that. Especially if always better than forced. I especially give, if there's yeah. socialized medicine. I mean, how cool would that be? Yeah. That now that is a really cool like way to handle this in just a different way, right? So instead yeah. of it being a get penalty relief. enforced, it's like, hey, your if company your company relief. can keep their yeah. BMI to here, then you're you, costing healthcare less. Then everybody gets this right. percent off of their taxes and the company as a whole. That would be really cool. Yeah, why not right. incentivize people that way? Because yeah. be, would, we don't care. Would say it's you know because, why? Because we don't care. No, we really don't care. No, we do. It's somehow it's still no, we discriminatory. Listen, yeah, th we do, but you're talking about a majority of Americans. Uh, Good luck getting that power. You think the government cares whether people are No, the government cares to 
get votes. And so try imagine being a politician. Imagine you're a politician, right? In the lead. I'm winning. I'm winning. And I go up there and I go, we're going to give fit and healthy people a tax break. You lost. Yeah. Sorry, you lost. Yeah, but well, you I remember all these corporate like wellness programs were kind of emerging. Even like, I, and it was like Virgin Health, like the, within the company, they had ways of tracking everybody and like their step counts and their nutrition and all that. And if they contributed to it, they would end up getting uh, like pay incentives or like vacation time and all that kind of stuff. So it was like, and I thought that was going to be something that other companies picked up on and like it was going to be a thing. And you know, I haven't seen it since. Mm. Yeah, and plus, I would never say it the way you just said it Sal like you know that's you the can, way that they'll spin it that's you, the way no, you your spin opponent it, you will spin, spin it. it oh your opponent yeah okay well it's different you said I come out and say this way you would lose no what you would say is like hey I've proposed an incentive for us to get healthier as a nation of course where you would make more money by and your like, opponent would be like he doesn't like Americans he, he, doesn't like, he yeah. hates fat people yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's discriminated against us. and then you would have a bunch of overweight people I'm healthy what are you talking about Dude. body yeah. man yeah, yeah never. shut it down like two never. words. Interesting this, though, huh? Interesting. I know. Yeah. I think that's. I, I think it's really interesting. I mean, I, I I don't agree with the the way they're doing it. I do like the idea of uh, it being an incentive. I think that's really cool. I think yeah, that we should definitely be doing that. I mean, at the bottom. Here's the thing that's interesting to me. It's been having since two. We haven't. I didn't even know about it. Like, why too are we not at least looking into the things that Japan at three point five percent? And what are we at? We're at. 40, 40 obesity? Yeah, 40. Is, I know majority of overweight obesity. Yeah, 40, so, right, 40%. Yeah, we're in the 40 percentile oh. at the highest, right? And then you have them at three per three and a half percent. I, I mean, know. at at least at least we should explore some of the things that maybe they're doing. And then maybe because I'm with you on the free market and like we shouldn't force anything. Like, okay, so how do we take something that is forced and instead of it being forced, we incentivize? You know, I think you know I, where I, I would love start. Can I tell you where I would start? Okay, because I'm not anti regulation, I'm just anti most regulation. But here's where I would start. I think it should be, I think you should not be able to advertise to anyone who's not an adult, period, end of story. Oh, yeah. You should not be able to advertise or target. Anybody that's not 18 or older, because when you go in the grocery the pharmaceutical store, pharmaceutical drugs, go in the grocery store and walk through and look at all the terrible food, and a majority of it is advertised to your kids. A majority well, of yeah, it. Well, yeah, that's the reason why the candy section is no taller than four feet. Yep. And it starts from the floor it's up. It's crazy yeah. that we allow- it's not made for adults. Yeah, it's crazy. No, and then, no. of course, I know parents control it, but it would make a difference. I think it would definitely make a difference. You know, See, I, I bet you there's actually, I bet you there's some countries that have already done that where you can't put candy down low like that. I bet you there's some countries that have already tried something. Wouldn't be surprised if Japan has maybe done something. Mm -hmm. This is what I mean. If a company's got, if a, a country's got 3.5%, we're 40 something. Like, okay, maybe we don't do something that's like as socialist as freaking like taxing everybody yeah. for it. But maybe there's some other ideas like that. That maybe they're already even employed. Maybe they already do that where Candy's you can't. in the back section. Yeah, or it's like cigarettes, where it's like behind a glass where yeah. you have to ask for it. You know what I'm you saying? Have to show like, ID. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what are. It'd be interesting to see a list of all the things that Japan is doing to combat Every time obesity. I try to get that premium bottle of Crown, you know, like I got to go, oh, I got to wait for the guy to come. Like, that should be candy. Yeah. I want to sneak why, why make it hard for me? How <laughs> often do you think, can you, does that. Deter you sometimes? Are there times where you're gonna yeah, you're gonna do and you're like, yeah, it doesn't feel like that. Oh, well, like yeah, I gotta wait to the intercom. Like yeah, we got so many needs. You know, <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I'm out of here. You know, I'll just uh, grab the advertising to children under the age of twelve is illegal. Yeah, twelve. In wow. Norway, Sweden, and uh, Quebec. Why do they make it twelve? Here, you can advertise to anybody. You can even advertise to people that can't buy your products. The pharma industry does that all the time. We love consumerism here. I know. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, yeah. It runs. Look at that right there. It says, is it illegal to market left. sweets to kids? Is there anybody that does that? Uh, oh, wow. California enacted legislation prohibiting schools from marketing unhealthy food and or beverages during the school day. Huh? Mm. So here's the, okay, not, okay. Yeah, you, you know what though? between the lines and something like Yeah, but that. you know yeah. what though? This points another problem of what I said. Who determines yeah. what's healthy and unhealthy? Yeah, the exactly. Nature Valley bars. Yeah, dude. You know what I'm saying? Not like even. The, the you, no, not even. Remember that? Remember when Congress. Lunchables. Yeah. Do you remember when Congress, they were like, they were debating at like school lunches? Yeah, the pizza thing. Yeah, and they're you like, no, it has to have a vegetable in it. Yes. And they want, they, they debated and won that pizza, pizza counts. Sauce. Yeah. Because yeah. it's got sauce on it's it. So, it's the sauce. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good. It's yeah. tomatoes. Yeah. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Why can't be racist for yeah. you? Look at the sauce. Wait, I thought it's gravy. Isn't it gravy? It's gravy. It's not sauce. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I told I had a client once that did that to me. I, I, I trained him, and yeah, he's a funny guy. I love the guy. And I'm like, so how, you know, what'd you eat uh, this morning? And he's like, oh, he's like, Greek guy. His name is Spiro, a good friend of mine. He goes, oh, I had a little bit of, you know, I had some eggs. I had a little bit of milk. 
I had a little flour. I'm like, you had pancakes. Like, yeah, I had pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I, I was hey, trying I, to make it sound better. With I, it wasn't, I, I had to, like, I was not, I definitely wasn't a kid. I was definitely older adult when I actually really realized that, like, pancakes is just cake. It's literally just cake. It's, it's cake like, for breakfast? Yes, it's in cake. a pan. I know. Yeah, and yet we have like, I mean, and I'm pretty sure like I, like K Katrina wasn't fully aware of that until like I made that clear to her. I'm like, you know that we it's let It's in our, the name. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know we're basically giving our son cake for breakfast every time we do that, right? Like, Dude, you know there's a company, yeah. we're not, no affiliation. They're about to get a free plug right now. I fucking, uh, what's the name of the company? Simple Mills, I think. They have inc they have this, this, this uh, flour. It's uh, made with almond flour, oh, and you I can make pancakes about. with it. You yeah. add an egg, uh -huh. you add some milk to it. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's pretty legit. It's the hell. It's healthy. We, we we have like a healthy for. I mean, to and they have crack. My wife is gonna, my wife is gonna be mad that I've sold her out like that. But we, we the pancakes that Max get aren't traditional. Well, no, pancakes. you guys now. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, the ingredients like, are probably a lot yeah, better. Yeah, very, way better. But so generally speaking, yeah. though, like you, the average person the feeds their kids is, is eating flawed. pancakes every day, and it's like it's really crazy when you think about that. Like, because if you ask someone, like, "Hey, would you give your kid ice yeah. cream? Or I mean, cake? cake? Yeah, birthday cake every single day for breakfast?" They'd be like, "No, hell no." Well, you kind of do. Pancakes, and then you pour sugar on top of it. <laughs> Even worse, you know what I'm saying? Not only are they eating mm, cake, it's not sweet enough. It's not sweet enough. Let me pour some sugar on top of it. Like, I used to, oh you know, it's God. so crazy too because I would eat that because we were sold. Boy, oh. it was bad back in the day, especially in the '90s. Like, you know, part of a healthy breakfast. You look at the picture. Yeah, it was like pancakes, cereal, yeah. orange juice, or whatever. Yeah, and the ego. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ego yeah. waffle. Yeah. I used to eat this uh, before big days, thinking like, oh, I'm gonna fuel my body. <laughs> and then you just bonk. Like, Couldn't two hours figure later. out why I felt dead yeah i couldn't figure out because yeah. i was giving myself diabetes when i was eight years old yeah. oh, pastries oh, muffins oh like, bro dude, good lord yeah. the breakfast cereal market alone is insane yeah it's absolutely insane it's we all know the history of, uh, no. of breakfast cereals and why they were invented hey are yeah. you paying attention to the Stop um, from masturbating I, I mean i know you that's a fact yes. <laughs> that's a fact everybody <laughs> look it up yeah. Kellogg's cornflakes <sighs> That's hilarious to me. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, the the like, I don't pay attention to the the whole climate talk and the heat and all that stuff. Like that so like what, right now, uh, are you paying attention to like we? This has been one of the hottest runs that we've had in San Jose, isn't it? I don't know. Have you? I think I think it is. I mean, Andrew, a, do you know if it wave. is or not? I can't. At least I personally can't remember the last time that I ran my AC for this for this long. Have you guys got like AC bills lately that are like through the roof? Are you not? I don't even look at my AC bills. Really? You're I'm not? concerned for the polar bears for sure. <laughs> this is <laughs> stupid, dude. Yeah, stupid. no, my wife pays the bill. I have to look at it. Actually, I was thinking about with all this sun. I was like, I don't know how this guy's not a lobster. Normally he's like, <laughs> I thought for sure. I'm like, how come Justin and Doug aren't like lobsters? Hey, are Bro, you using I've been trying to introduce myself like Hold slowly on. to the sun. Are you yeah. using the Caldera's, uh, the, the sunscreen? No, you know, Doug, Doug literally just told me that they have. And I, last time I was like, oh, if they have Bro, a sunscreen, listen, I'm going to start using it. Doug, Doug uses, I think, do you use it daily? Uh, I do, actually, yes. The best sunscreen you'll find anywhere. So the thing I like about it, and this is a problem with the mineral-based sunscreens, is that they all claim to be, you know, don't leave a, a white Machine. haze, right? Yeah. You look uh, like a mime afterwards. Yeah. Right? And so I put that on and, uh, yeah, I look like a mime. Uh, Caldera actually doesn't leave a haze. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Doesn't leave it's a mineral based one, so it's not chemical yeah, that's based. Critical so you're not gonna me. get, you know, xenoestrogens. It can be wider. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it remember remember mineral based sunscreens reflect uh, UV rays back, whereas the chemical ones absorb it. Plus chemical ones, those chemicals get in your system. By the way, there's studies now showing that when people use those chemical based sunscreens, the amount that they absorb is far beyond and above what the FDA would even consider to be safe. Okay. Mm. So you actually absorb so quite a bit. So how does that work? How do they get away with that then? Uh, you'll, you're going to start seeing more and more of that stuff get kicked out. I think. Really? Yes, because the, we we're, we're, there's more and more data showing that they have hormonal effects uh, in people, mild hormonal effects, but use them on a regular basis. Right. And yes. pair them with all the other stuff. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. So it's mineral based. So you're not going to absorb these crazy chemicals. Reflects UV rays, so it works really well. But they also Caldera. That's why I like it so much. They've put in their anti-inflammatory natural compounds, to, so which actually help your skin deal with stress also. So yeah. it's not just sunscreen. It's also sunscreen plus things that moisturize and uh, add antioxidant type properties. Um, now, is it, uh, du I haven't, I actually haven't used it. Um, very cool. Because I don't really need stuff like this as much as like those two guys. But is it like a yeah, cream I mean, or is it to. like an oil like the other no, stuff? it's a cream. Oh, it's like mm -hmm. a cream. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're both. Yeah, just rub it in, and you'll see that. Just put some uh, on your nose, dude. It goes in clear. Wet that beak. Yep, <laughs> stop. <laughs> don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Put it on your head. Yeah. Oh, yeah look at that. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wow. even tell. We, we got to go by the shininess of his head. Be messing with me. No, you don't. Like no, no, it actually isn't no. making it at all no, shiny. Really? Which is yeah, surprising. No, you look still look Mexican. Yeah. Yep, no actually, white. smells good too. It does. <laughs> it still it does. does. <laughs> it smells good. That's great. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. It's a great yeah. product. Actually, that. you know what? I I normally, but for my head, I do have to put. Stuff have you got on sunburn on your head yet? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a horrible. Oh. Oh yeah, no. Especially with all top stuff down, right? See, I'm starting. to I have to like think about this because little by little. I mean, you guys know I'm probably five years away from looking like you. So this would be so great with that. Remember that shit I used to talk to you? Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I took you. Just you're playing the long game with me, huh? God's got a sense of humor, doesn't he? He's like, all right, but you talking shit? Pick on my guy. Go pick on my guy. I'll show you. So hey, when you first shaved it, was your head all white? Oh yeah, oh, you got man. you don't even notice right now because I I am outside a lot in yeah. the sun. But like the beginning of the before summer really hit. Like oh yeah, it's very very white. It takes a while for it to start to match your face. Yeah, you have to be consistent with having a shaved head. Otherwise, what's that, that's why like once you commit, you should commit all the way. You use a razor yeah. to shave it, right? Well, Vicky, I know like, that's right. She yeah, she takes that's it all right. the way down. If for summer, so for example, Vicky Vicky does it every Monday, right? We had a family uh, photo thing on Friday. Then I'll use the bic to bring it all the way back down mm -hmm. because then I have like I don't like like the stubbly look when mm -hmm. it's day probably four or five. Mm -hmm. But her cutting it low enough, like it, it's pretty good for a when, week. When I used to when I used to grapple, right? When I used to do jujitsu, uh guys with shaved heads had an advantage because they'd Slippery. have a, no, no. They'd have a because everybody had their hair short. But if you have stubble and you're grappling, and they rub uh, their freaking uh, skull in your face and your paper. neck. Oh, uh, dude, I hate it. That's funny. I would never thought. I didn't oh, yeah, dude. That. It's gnarly. Oh, uh, that's Yeah, you know, you get in positions, and it's like I would even you. think it's kind of hard, like, slippery, too. I would think. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The, the slippery thing, uh, when I was playing rugby, I remember these guys used to, like, take, like, Vaseline and, and put it all over their legs. And this so was after the game, and you guys were hanging out? This was, yeah. <laughs> so we party together. <laughs> He's like, this is not weird at all. We used to play this game. I was like, that was a fun game. Keep doing that. Yeah. You're playing at this lobby. Uh, You're yeah, gonna drink yeah. beer. <laughs> that wasn't part of it. You guys. Okay, it was during the game. <laughs> it was totally normal, man. It was it was totally normal. normal. <laughs> you ever tell a story and then realize hey, that's like, not a rugby ball? Yeah. <laughs> Why are the lights out? You ever yeah, tell yeah. a story and then you realize how crazy your story sounds? Yeah, yeah, as, yeah. You're telling as, you're as you're telling, you're like, like your friends are maybe like, I should tell this story. Yeah, yeah. that's that's like those are childhood stories for me. Right? I'll tell yeah. stories like, oh yeah, and then my mom got the. the yeah. It's like a legit fact. Dude, yeah. they like vastly their legs, and then you yeah, go tackle them, you slip right. No, off. that's true. That's true. Uh, no, but I'll tell stories when I was a kid to like people I, who I question did, those guys who yeah. didn't grow up like I did. Yeah, and this is an adult. You know, I'll start like my cousin and I were telling uh, my wife and his wife stories of when we were kids, and these are stories that for whatever reason we forgot to share or whatever. But him and I know them so well. So he's telling this story. You know, as we're telling these stories, our wives face they're like horrified. We thought it was totally normal. Like, yeah, not a big deal, you know? I know. So he's like, oh, yeah, one year for Christmas, he's like, I was nine years old, and I didn't clean my room a bunch of times. And it was like you know, three days after Christmas, I had all my toys out. My dad kept telling me to clean my room. And then one day he comes in my room and just stomps on all my toys and crushes them. And him and I start laughing. Oh, that was funny. And our wives are like, he, he crushed all your That's toys? So yeah. You were eight years old, and he stomped <laughs> on your toys? And we're like, well, yeah, but I didn't clean my room. They're like... But hold on, he stomped on all your. I learned a lesson that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe we should <laughs> clean it's, my toys. It's, it's clean wild, my toys. like how I mean, such a like uh, a testament to like how much like conditioning. Right? Yes. Right. And yes. Because you know you, you saying that it reminds me because I clearly remember this too of like you know I've told anybody who asks I'm an open book about childhood stuff and so yeah. I'll share it even though I don't talk about it or run around or pour me shit but if yeah. someone asks I'll tell you right. And I remember telling a therapist one time about like stories of like, you know, parents getting into it with so that. And then like me, like talking to them and calming them down. And I'm like sharing just telling them. And I remember the look on her <laughs> You're face. Like nine. She, yeah. She's like, you do realize that's like, yeah. Not normal at all, right? I'm like, well, no, it was normal. We did all the time. It happened all yeah. the time. <laughs> I was like a referee. Yeah. She's like, yeah, no, it's like nine year olds don't sit down and counsel <laughs> my, adults. My, so my wife has her own stories, right? Because she was telling uh, my daughter. My daughter wanted to go to the movies. She was going to go to the movies late at night the other night. By the way, she watched a movie called Long Legs. I think it was. Oh, is that that scary movie? Okay, dude. So my I've daughter. About this. So my daughter's like me. She she likes scary shit. She likes to feel thriller. <clears throat> she can handle it, but she went too far. Mm. She watched this movie and she got legit 
like spooked. Oh, yeah. Like to where, you know, she was like, I don't I can't I couldn't sleep last night. I was so scared. <laughs> Which I used to do to myself at her age too. I push so it so crazy. far. That you want to so find that line. You want to get scared you know what? just you, enough. So you think she's going to stop? Then back out. And you think she's going to stop? She's not. No. She's going to get over this yeah, at some yeah. point. There's a part of her that gets like it, like it, attracted or addicted to that. That feeling, was right? me, dude. Same thing. That's right? so weird. Yeah, and I'm still like that. So anyway, uh, Jessica's talking talking yeah. about. She was going to the movies. She's like, "Hey, can I go to the movies?" I'm like, "All right. Well, what time? I'll drop you off. I'm going to walk you all the way up to the theater because I want to make sure her and her friends go to the movie. You know, type of deal." And my my wife's like, "Oh, I used to go." I watched this movie by myself. I used to just go to the theater and watch it by myself. And then she's like doing the math and she's like, I was nine. She's like, I used to walk to the theaters and go to the movies. <laughs> yeah, and then, watch a movie. And then, like and then, and then my, my daughter so goes, this doesn't seem She's normal. like, well, maybe I, why don't I can't go by yeah, myself? Yeah, yeah. And Jessica goes, I was neglected. Totally different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could think she did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not good. Yeah. That's not good that I went to the movies at nine years old by myself, dude. <laughs> and hung out in the theater by yeah. myself. Yeah. That's like the one I tell you when yeah. I used to walk to the school. It was free thing. range. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. My sister and I, we used to walk to this school right here. It's like cr crossing a four lane highway. Dude, also, they're like, how old are we? Oh, we were in uh, third grade. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably not a good idea. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh, the that's good, so, the good old days, so dude. Hey, I got days. an article I'm gonna share with you guys. So, uh, this fitness related. Um, I gotta say, man, I feel like uh, trigger sessions are now mainstream. Did you guys see the what, article? What's it called now? I've heard so many different terms for this. Like so, micro this is becoming. Yeah. This is now becoming a, a thing, okay? They call it exercise snacking. Oh, exercise snacking. What was of it that was snacks? What, the, the guy who died, right? Because he's actually one of the people that, what was the, the dude with the arms that died that was super famous? Oh, he was really, oh, oh. he was known for actually uh, promoting these. He called them um, right, feeder sets. The one percenter guy? He called them feeder sets? Yes, yeah, 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 five feeder percent, sets. Yeah. Oh, five percent. Yeah, yeah, was it feeder sets yes, he called them? Yes, yeah, yes, I remember yes. he had a term for them too. I, you know, and he's been saying that for a really long time too. So yep. to, to give credit where it's due, there are definitely people in the fitness space that were on to this uh, and understood, um, yep. or at least I think they understood, or at least they knew, at least from from practicing it, right, that the value of it. So it's not like we were the first. No, to, to no, say no, it. no. But you know, we taught we, we trigger sessions were maps anabolic, which you know that was created 13, 12 years ago, something like that. Now it's like a big thing, and it's it's by the way, it's around strength training. This exercise snack thing that's going mainstream, yeah, revolves around strength training. And the results on this is crazy. One minute bursts of exercise three times a day in a 2022 study reduced all cause mortality risk by 38 to 40 percent. Wow, 38. To what, say 40, again. What three one times minute, a day? Three times a day. So basically, three minutes of working out. That's it. That's crazy. And, and I want you know people to, to understand this because this is good. By the way, this is good news because yeah. you can. This is doable. This is a great way to get doable. people introduced to strength Sal, training. This is three minutes. Come yeah. on. It's like you do you do an, a set three times a day of a different exercise. For the average person, 38 to 40% reduction in all-cause mortality. Rich Piana, right? Yes. Rich Piana. Okay. That's yeah, yeah. Rich Piana. going to bother me. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was feeder sets. I think you. Yeah. I think it, I think it was that. Yep, yep. I think it was, it was called that. Um, but, you know, very, very, very effective. I mean, it, it, it to me, too, it's a, uh, a a lot of what I was talking, Katrina and I were talking about this last night, because her and I are, are some of the lightest weight we've ever been since we've been together. So that, and we've lost a lot of muscle, but we've also maintained a lot, too. And I'm like, you know, it's so crazy. Um, once you kind of have built a solid foundation and you've been training for a long period of time, like it actually isn't as hard as we make it sound like That's to stay right. healthy and fit. No. The two major things that in my forties that I've learned to do that I didn't do when I was younger was I was really bad about the all on or all off thing mm -hmm. where at least like, like it, and her and I both were talking about this last night. It's like, you know, I know we haven't been consistent with our training like we were, we haven't been done, but at least we, we, we've scaled way back on the food. So it's yeah. like, we don't like, slam ourselves with overeating and bad food choices and then also low volume of training. And it's like, if you just, and then, you know, sometimes it is, I'll just go in the, in the garage and I might just do three sets of squats and that's all I got to it. But it's wild how just those little bit of micro workouts yep. here and there and then making good food choices. It keeps me like, I'm like, yep. I feel like I'm always two weeks out from feeling really good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know. That's near. muscle memory, dude. Yeah. I wish people understood that. Like yeah. uh, building your body initially is, is consistency, a lot of work. Maintaining is actually a lot easier than yeah. getting there in the first Way place. Way easier. Yeah. And it's not sold enough on how, because I think so many people that aren't into working out are so, like, I remember I had a buddy, like he said this to me one time. 
like when he, I was trying to get him in the training, he's like, dude, I, why would I, I, I do not want to spend all that time in the gym that you spend to look like that. I don't care enough to, and it's like, oh my God, if you only knew like yeah. one at that time, I was spending way too much time in the yeah. gym, not knowing what I was doing. But two, it's like, once you actually put that work in to build that foundation, the, the amount it takes to maintain yeah. that, especially if you balance it with eating, like mm -hmm. you don't keep eating like you're training seven days a week when you're not and yep. you and you adjust it then you, it's you'd be surprised you wouldn't put on that much you know, body fat and you won't lose that much I'll, muscle i'll say this 80 percent i'll say this confidently 80 percent of the value health and longevity benefits you get from exercise you would get from minimal exercise the other 20 percent you get from becoming a fitness fanatic in other words you don't have to become a fitness fanatic to get 80% of all right. those benefits. Right. So if you're listening to this and or if you have a family member or friend, like you don't have to get them to become a fitness fanatic. No. You got to get them to do a little bit consistently. Yes. Uh, walk every day, do a couple, you know, sets of this or that on a daily basis and they're going to get a good chunk of those health and longevity benefits. This is why I love that advice paired with even like when you obviously we know the role that food plays, but even not overcomplicating that and going like, just go hit your protein. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you, you can't have this. You need to eat this hit way. That first. You don't have to do none of your yeah. want. Like, I'm not going to say none of that shit to this person. All I'm going to say to this person I'm trying is like, literally, I just want you to do these couple micro workouts and do that consistently. And then I just want you to go after your protein. I'm not going to over overthink this. That's it. I got a question for you, Adam. I, I know you and you and Jason Phillips are going to be doing along those lines, along what we're talking about. You guys are going to be doing a course uh, or a webinar uh, teaching coaches and trainers how to really build a profitable and successful business. Now you're teaching, you're talking about going from a, to a seven or eight figure business. I'm assuming the stuff you're communicating here, they should probably already know before they come into it. Cause you guys are going to go higher level or is this going to be part of that? I mean, well? I think even if you're somebody who is just getting started, you're going to find value in this too. I don't think this is going to be like, even though, because how you coach people is a big part of it, right? Not yeah. just how you build your, that's part of how you and build And honestly, a, 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 a lot of the principles, and you guys obviously know this, uh, of scaling to seven and eight are the same principles to go from zero to six figures. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it there's there's things that do change as you scale, and there are certain skill sets from going from you know zero to six, six to seven, seven to eight, but a lot of the foundational principles are, are still there. It's the reason why four old fuddy-duddies like us could make a transition into this new tech media world and crush. It's not because we were masters at the podcasting, masters yeah. at you. It's not that at all. It's that we understood business, business rules, and how to lay a solid business and foundation. And we, what we, what the learning curve for us was, oh, how does that now apply in this new digital world? Yeah. But the same rules... That what made you guys all successful in in, in you know one on one and in personal and in, in brick and mortar businesses are the same principles that that have, have applied here. You know, you know, thinking about this too, um, these courses that I see that teach you know coaches and trainers how to build a business, uh, they're always taught by people who didn't do this yeah, do it yeah, themselves, yeah, which yeah. has always annoyed me. Yeah. Which is why we've always shied away from doing this. Because I see the people teaching it, and I could, I could say with confidence that the vast majority of them made their money doing these courses. Not yeah. they didn't build a business actually as a trainer or a coach. It was all about, you know, marketing and teaching people how to do it. One hundred percent. The at least a majority, if not all, these people that sell courses online, eighty percent of the money they make is selling you the course online. Yeah. Which, like they wouldn't last in a in, they wouldn't last as a trainer for three years in in, in a gym trying to build. A successful I business. always knew if we were going to move into the space of helping helping coaches and tra trainers, especially especially speaking to the specific point of scaling and making more money, I would want a consistent track record of not doing that and proving those type of numbers, and yeah. not just like getting there, but have been doing it for years. And I've been wanting us to do this for a long time. It's taken a long time for Doug to even allow me to talk about money and revenue on the on the podcast. And he still cringes every time yeah. I, I bring it up talking about. But I'm like, we're at a point now where it's necessary for people to understand if I'm like helping you like that, what this business has been doing for 
eight, nine years consistently. So for eight, nine years, we've been in that world before we even started to even help coaches and do that. And that's minus what that whatever that yeah. generates. And like, you're doing this with Jason who did the same thing on his own before yes. he ever taught other yeah. people. Yeah. And it's free. So it's like if yep. you if you are a aspiring coach, if you're a trainer who's just started training your business, or if you're a veteran who's been doing it for a really long time and you've plateaued like this is where I was in my career in my twenties where I could get to six figures relatively easy, but I had a really hard time breaking that plat you know, breaking through yeah. that plateau. So I it's, I think it's gonna be a great uh, dynamic conversation uh, for people at, at this, all levels. And this fitness. is ncimindpump.com. ncimindpump.com. All right, awesome. Uh, I have a shout out that this is a book that is very, uh, that my wife is reading. She really loves it. It is a spiritual led book. It's Christian based, but it's really good. She loves it. She's telling me all about it. And it's called, um, I'm going to pull it up for you. I think it's called The, the Lies That Women Are being told i'm gonna i'm gonna try and find this thing anyway she's like reading it right now she's totally loving uh this book i'm gonna get the oh lies women believe by nancy demoss and she's like this is this book is fire so if you're into that world check it out very cool look drinking alcohol can be a lot of fun but it really sucks the next day sometimes you waste a bunch of time just being on the couch and feeling like garbage well anyway there's a company called zbiotics that can help with that this is a genetically modified probiotic drink. So this bacteria doesn't exist anywhere else but in Zbiotics. And it actually breaks down some of the negative byproducts of alcohol consumption, like acetaldehyde. So you drink Zbiotics, then you drink alcohol. The next day, when I use it, I feel way better. Go check them out. Go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mindpump24. Use the code mindpump24 and get 15% off for first-time purchasers. All right? Back to the show. Our first caller is Phoenix from Canada. What's up, Phoenix? Hey. How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, so before I get started, I'd just like to say that I love you guys' podcasts. Um, I've looked through other podcasts, and there's just nothing else like yours. So thank you for the podcast. Yeah, I know they said it, buddy. Uh, <laughs> okay, so my question is, um, so I've heard that doing higher like alternating between low and high reps is optimal and i've been doing low reps for like two years now and every time i try to go into the high rep zone like anything past 12 i get like really tired and especially when i'm like training legs if i go up to like 12 i get like like almost nauseous at that point so how would i increase my reps without feeling that way you, you need to reframe how you see that, right? The fact that it's really difficult and you get you feel weak or you feel super tired of fatigue, yeah. that is opportunity for your body there's to adapt. The yeah, there's that that means you're going to adapt eventually and you're going to get stronger and it's going to make a huge difference. But that initial tran uh, you know switching over from training low reps all the time to now training high reps, it'll be probably one of the most pivotal things as far as uh, you and your fitness journey, as far as what you see, you unlock. But it, that, and part by the way, this is why this is so difficult, and why it's a tip that we're always reminding yeah. people because you get stuck. You get stuck in what you're good at, and you're strong, and you feel good, and so you're like, I want to leave the gym feeling strong, feeling good. I don't want to feel weak and beat up. But that's where you there, need to go. There's more to this though, too, Phoenix, because in your question, you said that you go to failure, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 not a yeah, good. That's, that's a big problem. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. So so, um, how long have you been listening to the podcast? Um, like like a year now. Yeah, you're you're way better off, way better off in terms of results by not going to failure. You want to stop about two reps or three reps before you fail, and that doesn't matter if you're going heavy, <clears throat> low reps, if you're going lighter, high reps. Stop every set about two or three reps short of failure. Going to failure doesn't produce any faster results except for when included, uh, like super occasional. But literally 90 to 95% of the time, if you look at your whole year, you want to stop about two or three reps short of failure. So number two with high reps, so I think that'll handle yeah. the nausea, by the way, because if I did a set of 15 for oh, legs, yeah. To failure. I mean, if you didn't get nauseous, then uh, then you're weird. And what does your load look like with that? Like, have you really been adjusting it and scaling it down? Or are you trying to keep it kind of close to what you were doing with low reps? Yeah. In other words, go lighter. Yeah i I've been 
I do go lighter because now I've sort of changed to like slow and really controlled reps. So I can do like like a set of like I don't know four or six, uh, like three fifteen for squats. But if I get it to like one eighty five and I do slow controlled reps for like ten. That like destroys me pretty much. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, That's normal, yeah. bro. That's and by, normal. by the way, you're a big boy. Yeah. You're six two, two thirty, eighteen years old. Yeah, yeah. You've got a lot yeah. of yeah, dude. You got a lot of yeah. uh, of muscle building potential. But what you're dipping, you're tapping into is really uh, it's a completely different feeling. I have yeah. the perfect program for him right now. Map strong and listen to the advice Ooh, you just strong gave. Strong, yeah. Make sure out of the gates. Map, is like that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Map strong and then take the advice of two reps. You know, may always leave two in the tank. So that's the big thing to take away. You're gonna yeah. don't the hardest thing when you're a, when you're an 18 year old strong man that's growing right now is the having to humble yourself and put a weight on there that your girlfriend's probably doing. You just gotta you just gotta be okay with that. Like it like the it's it's about the end goal. Yeah, see, look, I could tell you already. That's he's like, fuck. <laughs> Did really? you look at your girlfriend? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You 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 will see gains. You are gonna pack on more muscle. Don't get hung up like I can do 315 and now I have to do 135 on the bar and I'm not going to like you don't worry you're going to put muscle Yeah and when you go back to your low reps you're going to crush, crush your old records crush you know so listen here's the thing especially for a young young man like you uh the biggest obstacle in your way is going to be your ego I'm going to tell you this right now it was the biggest obstacle in my way it was the biggest obstacle in, in Justin's mind. way, yeah. Adam's way. Like yeah. any young man who's really 100%. into strength training, especially if you have any talent or aptitude, you're building muscle, you're a big, but two, 230 pounds, six foot two, you know, you're squatting three plates at your age, you know, for low rep, your ego is going to slow you down or cause you to plateau. So if you can get out of your own way and just follow the, listen to what we're saying, trust the process. You're going to get there way faster. Otherwise, what's going to happen is what happened to me is it took me to my mid to late 20s before I really figured things out. And I wasted a good seven, eight years right. of lifting in the gym because it was it was my ego. My ego was doing the lifting, not my my mind. Yeah. So so go into it. Like we said, we'll send you Map Strong if you don't have that. If you this follow a perfect it, program for you, you. you follow that with the advice that we're giving you, you're going to, bro, you're going to, you're yeah. going to get bigger and leaner at the same time. Yeah. If you just work on building that gas tank, you're going to see how that translates when you go back to lifting uh, and doing lower reps. Like you're just going to have that extra bit of push and, and the fatigue isn't even going to be a factor anymore. So, you know, yeah, right now it sucks. Like you're, it feels like a, a total grind, uh, but that's because it's a completely different focus. This is an adaptation you're trying to seek that uh, you're deficient in. So, you know, lean into that because the overall is going to get stronger. And, and when you first start, okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what this is going to look like day one of this program. You're going to have to do 15 to 20 reps on something. And you're going to put a weight on there and you're going to realize, oh, shit, I can't even get to, you know, 13. Especially by set two or three. Yeah, I can't even get to 13. And you're going to have to reduce the weight dramatically and you're going to want to go, ah, oh, fuck this. I don't want to do this. I'd rather put weight back. And you, But if you trust us, okay, I know it's only been a year you've been listening to us, but I promise you we won't steer you the wrong way. If you follow MAPS strong the way it's laid out, you listen to the advice Sal said about always leaving two in the tank, light mm -hmm. the, I'd rather, in fact, I would rather you even have three or four in the tank right now with what your body needs for the way you've been training heavy to failure for so long. You leaving three, four in the tank is going to be okay. You don't even need to get, like, so put a weight that's light. And, and the way you need to think mentally is like technique, form, technique. Tempo slowing down. I'm practicing the movement. I'm 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 building my cardio in this right. Like think like that, and then don't worry. The program is going to tra transition you into heavy weight again. And when you get to that heavy weight, just watch. Watch what happens by the end of that program. Okay. Well, the thing is that I'm just like I'm so used to just like training as hard as I can, pretty much. Yeah. Like yeah, we know. It's kind of hard for me to go like four reps before failure that's i know it is yeah. that's what we're trying to explain to you right now yeah. and you can either you can either listen to us and let us blow your minds okay blow your mind or you can ignore us and you'll learn it that way you over will the next six seven years you'll learn the lesson you'll learn it 
And then when you learn it, you're like, ah, shit, yeah. I yeah. should have done yeah, it yeah, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> That happened to me so many this times. Like, this is like talking to myself. Yeah, know, yeah it is. Yeah. No, that's why we get it so much. I get it, and I and I know how challenging it's going to be. But if you listen, if you and listen, Phoenix, three months of your life, three months of your life, take our advice, and, and there's going to trust me. There's going to be mental hurdles here too. You're going to see yourself in two weeks, and you're going to have moments where you'll be like, "These guys are wrong. I look worse. I'm getting worse. I'm getting weaker. Oh, this ain't you're like you're gonna you're gonna have that that ego mind fuck happen to you." And I'm asking you. To just commit to what we're saying for three months, and I'll blow your mind. Yeah. But if you if you let the if you let the the, the mental game you know, win, then I then I this I'm, is, you're gonna learn later. Then this is really a question about discipline, yeah. uh, Phoenix. So, and what makes a boy a man is discipline, and discipline is not uh, you know pushing through and doing what you think is right, even though you might think it's wrong. Discipline is doing the right thing, even when you don't want to. And that's what makes a man a man. So so this is a discipline thing. So when you start to go outside of that, I want you to do this. I want you to ask yourself, am I disciplined yeah. or am I just a boy? You've already proven you're tough. Okay. Now you yeah. gotta mentally sharpen up and, and do what's right for your body. And then and then bro, and then I'm telling you right now, we're asking you to trust us. We're not gonna have to ask you again if you do this. After this, you'll come back and we're like, I'll do whatever you guys say because you're gonna see, you'll see the results. I I'm, we're gonna send over a map strong to you. I also want Doug to put you in the private forum, okay? Because when you have these what I know will come, okay? Mental challenges where you you you're you're not trusting the process, or I, I want you to be able to reach out to us and just message us and say, hey, this is what I feel, this is what I see going on, and let us talk you through it if you need to. So you're gonna get strong, I'm gonna put you in the forum, and then I'd like an update once a month from you, just letting us know how it's going, what you what you see, what you notice, what what challenges you're having. Let us walk you through that. Okay. Cool. All right, thank you guys. You right, got yeah, it, man. You got it, homie. I'm, I'm excited to see how far yeah. you get, bro. Yeah, you have a lot of potential, dude. Crazy potential. Thank you. Bye. Take All it right. easy. Either one of two things is going to happen right now. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to make bets? Either yeah, he's yeah. either he's going to do what I did and be like, nah, <laughs> I'll do what I want. There's friction right now. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe or, sit, sit sit in. Or maybe he's wiser than I was at his age. And yeah, he goes, uh, you know uh, what? Those guys know what they're talking about. Uh, but I, I, this bro, I can. There's so many conversations I had with older lifters, with dudes that I looked up to, whatever. Yeah. Where they would, I would ask them questions, and they give me an answer. Looking back, the right answer. Yeah. But looking back, I thought that they were bullshitting me or they, oh, they or just think like, I'm a kid. that's just lame. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, you don't yeah, want to tell, whatever. Boring. They just want to make me not, you know, whatever. Stupid. It was so dumb. I wasted so much time. I know. Because my ego, can, by the way, this still, I was, my ego still gets in the way, uh, even at you know, I'm my age now. Um, I just now I'm aware that it can get in the way, so it's a, it's a little bit different, but- Boy, I mean, 6'2", 230. You know? bro. He's, he's a big he's kid. Big Already kid, big potential. Things. I mean, here, here's also what's going to be very hard. is like, I want to be a mass monster. I mean, that's like his yeah. that's his, his, his statement in his email. Uh -huh. I want to be a mass monster. There you go. So he bro, is- Bro, if you're 230, 6'2", 18, and you do things right, you yeah. will be. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. kind of already are. kind of there already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So at 18, I was about 160, uh, right about now. <laughs> One, six, six, two, I'm 6'2", six, two you and a half, 6'3", right? You were so, a heavy dumbbell? Yeah. And he, he, he is- uh, And 315, I think that damn near took almost to- I was 30 before I saw those, yeah. that kind of number. So he's like, yeah, way ahead. You got plenty of potential, man. Our next caller is Kelly from Canada. Hi, Kelly. Hello, hello. Hi. How can we help you? Hey, thanks for your help, guys. You got it. Um, So I've worked out since I was 12, you know, the typical cardio back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, I'm now in my 40s and I've struggled with my weight my whole life. By listening to your podcast, I've included some of your programs into my workouts. Um, right now I'm using the muscle mummy program. Um, unfortunately due to my fear of gaining weight, I continue to do my HIIT training every morning for like 70 to 80 minutes, whatever burns 500 calories basically. Um, so I managed back during COVID to jump on Ozempic. So I went from 205 pounds to 150 pounds. So I'd like to sort of like I've decreased somewhat, you know, but I'm still taking it because I still have that fear that I don't want to gain the weight back. So any suggestions on a permanent solution without medication, I'd appreciate plus 
keep in mind my thought, my fear of the weight gain again. Yeah. How, how long oh, you yeah. been, how, Kelly, how long have you been listening to us? Oh, forever. I think I know some of your answers. I was going to say, <laughs> I, that's why I'm asking right now. Cause I'm like, I have a yeah, feeling she knows exactly yeah. what we're going to say to her right now. Yeah. Wait, so, <laughs> okay. So yeah. I'll, I'll tell you like one of the big mistakes that you made. And first off, I want to say, I, I appreciate you listening to the show and coming on here and letting us uh, talk to you. Yeah. I can hear in your voice and in your question, just the challenge and the fear that you have uh, mm -hmm. over a potential weight gain or going backwards or maybe in a place you were before that you really now never want to go back to again. I do want to say to you yeah. though, that if you allow that fear to drive your decisions around your workouts and your diet, it is not going to lead you in the right direction. Fear is going to drive you to beat yourself up in the gym. It's going to drive you to anxiety over fear, which is then going to drive you to seek comfort from food and seek comfort from other areas. So what you, what's happening right now with this fear is it's taking over. Doing extra workouts on top of muscle mommy, especially 80 minutes. Especially on a hit. You, you, essentially, and, and pardon me for, for my, my bluntness, you took muscle mommy and you just erased it. You, you, you took the program and you could have done it, it. It didn't matter that you did muscle mommy. You could have done anything, anything yeah. that was not effective. It's what ended up happening. That 80 minutes of, of hit erased any potential benefits you would have gotten from muscle mommy. All you did was move a lot. So it could have been anything. You could have just walked. You could have jumped in place. You could have just moved. And as you've listened to the podcast before, that'll teach your body to adapt in a very efficient way to where you're going to be in a, a situation where your metabolism is slow and it's very difficult to to move in any positive direction with with nutrition to where you could eat more and not gain weight or move back with exercise. What we need to do is we need to build some muscle, build some strength. strength. And I need you, and yes. I need you to get out of that hit cardio mentality. Like get out of it. The the perfect program for someone like you would be like a MAPS 15, MAPS anabolic, walking only, no additional anything else. And then start and start there and slowly do what's called the reverse diet and build your metabolism up so that you're in a position where you don't fear uh, eating, you know, like a normal person. Only then can we visit coming off Ozempic and dealing with the potential hunger or challenges that come from that. Kelly, are you want, sorry, Sally, I don't know if you, but I just want to, I have to ask this right now because you're, you're the type I want, I, I want, I want to help you. And I feel like it's going to be a lot more than what we're going to say to you right now. Are, are you one of the people that emailed in for a GLP one coaching that we, we've talked about? No. Okay. I would really like to see you in there. I just, I, I this is going to be a little bit of work. Uh, no, it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. This is going to be, uh, and it's, it, and it's, and I hearing from your voice, Hearing what you've done, uh, it, it's going to be really. This is not going to be easy. It's going to take. The answer is easy. The what it's going to take is going to be very difficult. Uh, what you'll have to overcome, and I just, man, I want to hold your hand through this process. Um, I would love this. I would love to see you in there because this is going to be something where I want to be talking to you on a on a. You need a lot basis. of reassurance that you're doing the. That right you're going to be okay. You're going to yeah. be okay. You're going to be okay if we do the right thing. Where yeah. you won't be okay. Yeah is if you keep heading this direction. Yeah. If you keep going down this direction, eventually your body is going to rebel and it's going to be worse. But if we if we do what you need to do, you're going to be just fine. You're you're in a you're in an okay place right now. We can recover from this, but we can't continue going down this path. In other words, we want to uh, if you have guidance along this way, your odds of success are high. And that's what we want to I think is I think what Adam is saying is is on point. I think guidance through this process, and then you'll get exactly you'll get to a far better place than you could imagine. Yeah. Um, it, but the guidance is going to be very important because it's going to be very difficult as you start to move in this direction. You're going to question and challenge yourself. As far as your body rebelling is concerned, you're probably already noticing signs of rebellion now. Whether it either be fatigue, increased anxiety, sleep disturbances, changes in moods, Plateau. uh, plateaus, and whatever metabolism just not responding, all that stuff. And so, if you keep going down this path, it's going to be it's going to be uh, very very uh, challenging. So, we're, we're, yeah, go ahead. All those flags, all those red flags, I have. It's even to the point now where my doctors put me on anxiety meds to just try and control me. Mm. Yeah, have you? Um, are you working with someone like a like a coach or a therapist along along this process to help you with that? No. 
Mm. It would be very valuable if you could. We have to. We have to take her, bro. Yeah, we have yeah. to take her. No, well, I think both. But I think if you working with a, a therapist on the side is going to really help you with. Because anxiety is a son of a bitch when it comes to um, you know having anxiety around diet and exercise, because the anxiety is so bad and so strong. I've worked with a lot of people like this that um, it starts to drive cravings, it starts to drive uh, behaviors that then make the anxiety worse. So it's like a um, you know it's like a, a self feeding process, or uh, it just continues to make itself worse and worse and worse. Very difficult to stop. But working with someone on the side, talking through these things is going to help. But I would love, I think Adam's on point. I would love to see you in that group. We're going to be coaching people, 50 people, uh, who are using a GLP-1 through this whole process with the goal of, of helping them develop behaviors that last far longer than the time they're on the GLP-1. Did you, did you know we were doing that? Did you know, were you aware, Kelly, that we were doing that? Yeah, I thought it was just for trainers. So that's no, why I didn't bother no, with it. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm glad you said that. So I need to be more, more clear. It's it's for, I and the we've had a lot of people email that want to do it and we're only taking 50 you're you're one of the 50 type of people i want to help right now because I, where you're at there's people i think that are taking it that want to just try and shed 10 pounds and they think that's a great idea there i'm none of us are interested in helping those people I, we want to help people that have struggled with weight for a very long time yeah. they've now leaned into glp ones they're seeing some success but how do they manage it how do they manage out of it going through that process the, you're like literally who we are trying to help and we want to try and limit those spaces to people like you so uh i, I want I, is it what's the email doug coach glp1.com yeah we'll send that to you and then in the meantime let's put you in the forum if you're not in our forum kelly so you can yeah. ask us questions are you in there or no no Okay, we'll include yeah. you in the form. And then here's some takeaways, okay? You have MAPS Muscle Mommy. I think it's a great program for you. MAPS Anabolic or MAPS 15 would be another program that I think would be good for you. Follow MAPS yeah, Muscle Mommy works. unless you want one of the other ones. Uh, do you want to try one of the other ones I mentioned? Um, I have a whole ton of your programs. So Anabolic and 15 and there's a whole bunch I have. Okay. Uh, let's, do, let's do MAPS 15. Do the advanced version. Uh, and all I want you to do on, uh -huh. in addition to that is walk. Yes. I don't want hit cardio. I don't want elliptical cardio. I don't want whatever. I just want you to walk. 10,000 steps a day is perfectly fine. Don't go over 15,000 steps because that can get out of hand as well. And that's it. And then in the meantime with your diet, try to hit your target body weight and protein. And let's just start there. Just yeah. start there. And let's allow your body to slowly build muscle and strength. If you're starting to get stronger from the workouts – then you know you're moving in the right direction. I have nothing to add to that because this is what we have to do. Yeah. There's not even a question around. That's the recipe. I know sometimes we all bounce around, oh, maybe try this. So like that's what you have to do. We have to scale back the all the hit stuff. You can and the the move is to replace that with walking or nothing, but walking would be great because I'm sure your mind is going to want to do something. So that's totally safe and okay. Not power walking up hills. And carrying five pounds or anything like that, or a weight vet, like just walking, okay? Walking and let's let's bring down that anxiety. Let's think about all the things that we're grateful in life and all the positive stuff, right? Think like that while you walk, and then follow mm -hmm. the MAPS fifteen protocol with nothing else in addition to that, and literally just focus on the protein. It's the same. Like, th this is what we have to do. And you'll, meditation and, and gratitude, yes. uh, journaling. Yes. I mean, anything you can do to kind of steer your mind more in a positive direction. And it's going to feel weird and awkward and forced, but that's because it's not something that you know that feels natural. Yeah. So it is a practice, like anything. But if you see yourself getting stronger. When you go back to the gym following Maths 15, you're like, wow, I'm stronger. Wow, I'm stronger. You're moving in the right direction. Don't question anything else. I'm getting stronger. I'm moving in the right direction. Don't question anything else. Don't worry about the scale. Don't worry about anything else. You're moving in the right direction. And until until we start that Coach GLP one thing that we're going to do in the next 30 days or so, you're in the forum. Talk to us into the meantime. But I, I'm, I'm getting you over into the, the GLP one. You need to be in that group with us. But in the meantime, we're going to have you in the forum. Stay in touch with us, okay? Yeah, thank you. Um, like, I always justified the cardio because I have a desk job all day. So I always thought, okay, that's okay because I'm getting in my, like, 11,000 steps. Yeah, no, 11,000. It would be like, okay if it was like, walking, yeah. Kelly. It would be okay if it's walking. That's good. Th that's a good thought process because you have a desk all day long that you should try yeah. and walk to make up for that, but not hit. No. Yeah, not, not hit. Not, not hit, not running, not holding dumbbells. That not, intensity down. That's right. Yeah. 
Okay. Especially by okay, the way, perfect. where we're at calorie wise with Ozempic. Okay, Spe like it's it's yeah. that would be the advice no matter what you were doing diet wise, but it becomes crucial because you you're on a low calorie diet and you're on Ozempic. So that makes it even more important to not do that. Listen, it, you can do this. It's scary. Yeah. I know it's yep. scary. But you can do this. The only way to get to the other end is to go through the fire. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what I'm going to tell you, listen, focus on getting stronger and ignore everything else. Ignore every, If that means you don't look in the mirror, if that means you don't weigh yourself, fine, don't do it. Just, am I getting stronger? Okay, I'm moving in the right direction. I'm moving in the right direction. You'll get out of this hell that you feel like you're in right now. You will get out of it. We got to go through the fire first, okay? Yep. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. We got you, Kelly. Kelly, you yeah. got it. We're going to do it. Let us Thank you. keep up with us in the forum, please. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Wow, I didn't Poor realize lady. that maybe people mm. thought that the- That was for trainers. That was for trainers. No, no, it's for people who want to- No, who are and this. it's like, okay, so we've got, I don't know, I think, we, I think we've received 800 or 900 emails, give or take, somewhere around there. And, I, and I've, I've read and seen some of them. And we've got people in there, okay, that I know that are just trying to use GLP-1s to shred 10 or 15 pounds. Yeah, no. You know, that is not what we're, this is who I'm interested yes. in. Mm -hmm. Because someone like this, th it's so important uh, that she does this correctly. And it's she's obviously not doing it. And the path that she's heading, well, it sounds like there are all those, the signs that you said that she's going to get, she's already getting. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it. So it's like that we have to make a course correct like now to help fix and, and repair what we've been doing. Um, and this is, I mean, to me, these are the people I want to help. I felt, I mean, I tell you, you know, uh, you just, you feel, because I could, I could yeah. feel her fear and anxiety through big, big time fear, her yeah. voice and just watching her through the, you know, the camera. That's here. why, but this way she has to have help. Yeah. This yeah. is not, gonna, I can tell it's not going to be easy. It's I will, you know, hard. if I was trained, a lot of people in her corner, listen, for sure. and I'm going to look Kelly, if you're still listening to this, like, you know, when I used to train people, I got clients in very similar situations and we got out of it so successfully and profoundly, just profound uh, improvements in the quality of your life. So it's totally possible, but you're going to go through a scary part. You got to go through the scary part. And, and, and it, 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 it's if it's not us, then it needs to for sure be. Uh, I mean, in the perfect world, it's a therapist and us yeah. doing this together. But it, it's got to be at least one of us because yeah. this type of a situation. Because yeah, I've had many clients like this. Yep is you just need that constant reassurance totally. as you're doing because you're we're going to get you in the right direction but what is going to happen is the the fear the mental hurdles the questioning yes yep. is, and and that is that's difficult totally. that is the difficult part the advice simple easy straightforward everybody agrees the execution of it is very difficult because of all the stuff that's going to come up and surface. And that's where having either the therapist or a really good coach that understands this, that can continue to, to, to remind you that you're doing good. You're heading the right track. We got this. We're, it's, gonna, we're, it's, it's all going to come together. Just trust the process. Our next caller is Jordan from Wisconsin. What's up, Jordan? What's happening? Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Good, man. Good. How are you? I'm doing amazing. I know this is where usually uh, people tend to fangirl pretty hard, so I wanted to take a slightly different approach and help people that might be on the fence. I believe you are most qualified to help the person that used to be. So for anyone that felt like I did 10 months ago, if you're sick and tired of people saying things like, do you even eat or uh, put some meat on those bones? If you've ever been labeled like scrawny or the skinny kid, you need to be listening to these guys and you have to be following Mind Pump. And you absolutely need to get a MAPS program. It is way more than a workout guide. It's like your own personal trainer. It's a confidence booster. And above all, it's the key to surrounding yourself with the right kind of people. Because I can tell you, there's not a more helpful, kind, or supportive group than the people that you'll meet at the gym. All right, these guys will help you find your new tribe. Okay, just wanted to get that out. Thank you, guys. I, I like, you earned a free program. All right, yeah. <laughs> cut that for commercial. Hey, we'll I, be right back. I'm already skipping ahead, looking at your question right now. And did we, did the episode air where we went deep on Dungeons and Dragons yet? Not yet. No. Oh, that's funny that you put Dungeons and Dragons in there because we actually just had a big conversation. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how does he? I, know I was that trying one? to describe it and did a terrible job. But yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, so how can we help you, man? All right. Well, with that out of the way, I'll dive kind of into my question. Um, so I am a beginner. So what should progress look like for a beginner? How do I set myself up for success from the start? And what are some realistic goals I should be aiming for in terms of body weight, expectations, and just overall strength gains? 
give a little bit of background, last September, I was taking photos of myself for work, and I noticed that my face looked a little skinny. And when I mentioned it to my wife, I'm slightly embarrassed to um, let you guys know how fast she responded. Yes, you are too skinny. So after I dusted off my pride there for a little bit, I kind of took a look at my life and I realized, okay, at the time of writing this, I'm 29 years old. I'm five feet, eight inches tall on a good day. And I weighed about 142 pounds soaking wet. Uh, I didn't really work out uh, unless you count playing pickleball and chasing your kids around. Um, I didn't play sports in high school. And I was about as well versed in the weight room as Sal and Adam are in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, <laughs> yes. That all, that all changed when I discovered Mind Pump. I started listening religiously. And even though I don't understand most of the terminology uh, or when Justin talks about sports, uh, but I do love the show and I feel I found a lot of value in it. Um, that was in September. October rolled around. And I took advantage of the deal of the month and bought the Hard Gainer bundle. Fast forward nine months, I could not be happier. I finished both anabolic and mass aesthetic, and I've recently restarted anabolic over again. It's completely changed my views on the gym, diet, and the overall feeling about my appearance. I'm now 30 years old, still 5'8", but I weigh 157 pounds. Yeah. My lifts have gone up and after starting anabolic over for the second time, but I've only added about 20 to 25 pounds to the bar. Um, even though I feel like I'm on the right track, I am still a beginner, and I'm unsure about what goals I should be setting. Uh, any advice on what progress should look like, how to set myself up for success, and some attainable goals to aim for would be amazing. And finally, if there are any Mind Pump fitness trainers near Appleton that you guys could connect me with, that'd be a huge bonus. All right. Thank you for taking my question. Yeah, you got it, man. You're doing Dude, great, bro. Yeah, you are doing good. That's really good. Just keep it up. It was, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, okay. So here's what progress looks like for the first probably uh, two to three years of training for somebody whose goal is to really build muscle or, or add size to their body, uh, just get stronger. That's it. If you get stronger, you, everything else will follow. Don't worry about the mirror. Don't worry about the scale. Look at your lifts and get stronger. And this is true for at least the first three years, sometimes even longer. Now, after that, then things get a little bit more, you know, yeah, detailed. You shake it up a little bit. Then you got, but, but at this point, it's just about getting strong. I, Anabolic's a great program. I love power lift for you. I think that would be a great program. Mm. Uh, I think uh, aesthetic's good, although that's super high volume. So plug that in every once in a while. Um, mass performance, performance, put that in there to make sure you don't hurt yourself. Rotate in there, yeah. But dude, just get stronger for the next three years. That, that's your goal right there. I will tell the, I'll tell you the 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 challenge of that will be okay because you got the programming, you listen to the show. That's all gonna you got all you're lined up there. The hardest part where you're coming from is gonna be as you continue to get stronger and you continue to build muscle, your metabolism ramps up, and so will your calorie intake need to. And so what ends up happening with someone who's been skinny for a really long time, I could totally can relate to this, is you're just used to eating a certain amount of calories and much more than that is difficult. And so, and in order to keep packing that muscle on. So what happens in that first year sometimes, a lot of times part of the strength gains you get is just the CNS adapting to these movements and you're and you're performing them better. And so you see these strength gains. To continue those strength gains, we got to make sure that you're hitting that protein intake and yep. slowly increasing mm -hmm. calories. And so if you plateau or you don't see much more results, that will be the reason. Because you got your programming down, you got the right mindset and all this. Like it's literally going to be am I consistently hitting my protein intake and keeping my calories up or above? where they need to be to maintain the, where the new physique that I've built. And so if you can do that, then you can actually, for the first few years, should see pretty yep. linear yep. progress. Just need the building blocks. That's the that's the fun part of the early years is it's, it's, it is pretty linear when you're doing all the right things. But the challenge coming mm -hmm. from where you're at will be, can you keep bumping those calories and can you keep hitting that protein and take consistently while you're consistently hitting the, yeah. the, the programs? Yeah. Follow our programs, make sure you're eating enough, hitting your protein targets and get good sleep. Adequate and you sleep. will, you will gain over the next few years pretty consistently. You'll gain muscle and strength pretty consistently. What, what have you, have you ran into any challenges right now? It sounds like you've had a lot of success, but what, what is, is anything I said about the diet and stuff like that resonating? Is that difficult sometimes to push the calories or do you have no problem eating? plenty of calories no absolutely absolutely i didn't realize until i started following you guys that i was severely under eating i didn't realize until i started tracking calories and um 
I, I could do 3000 a day. And that was, uh, I mean, I probably before that was doing maybe 2000, 2200. Yeah, yeah. So adding in the lifting, I was doing about three. I'm, I've dropped down a little bit. I need to get better on consistency. So the calories and protein, I'm trying to be, I guess that's where I was going with my question is how, with my size and height, I wanted to try to get to 170, but I didn't know if that was too yeah. big. So then I'm trying 170 grams of protein and that's, that's tough, especially yeah. family of four trying to buy that much food and cooking. Um, I, I know Sal had mentioned sleep is my, probably the, my biggest hurdle right now. My wife and I, we've got two girls, six and two, and we co-slept for way too long. So any parents out there, newbies, uh, <laughs> two is the cutoff. Don't, don't let them sleep in the bed past two. My six year old, it's a nightmare. So sleep is a tough one. Um, I, I guess when it comes to working out or training, is it better to go work out on a bad night of sleep or recover on a bad night of sleep? Cause I, that's, I think my biggest problem is I get maybe six and a half hours on a good day. So maybe Sal, maybe having him with maps 15 also is yeah. like a good, like alternate choice. So I'd love to give you maps 15. If you don't have, do you Actually, have that's 15? your, that's the program you should just yeah. follow period in the story. Yeah, because no, I don't. Yeah, I yeah, just have yeah, uh, what was the hard is so No, we're gonna oh, send we're yeah. gonna send you Maps fifteen. That's your program. Just follow that. Do the bar the barbell version of it. Yeah. Keep your calories high, and you'll get stronger pretty consistently. As if your sleep starts to get better, yeah, then, then you we'll can go back create. to Maps anabolic and other stuff like that. But Maps fifteen is gonna be your program. Now, your question about bad night of sleep or workout. It depends on how many bad nights of sleep you get. Um, uh, where you need to get more sleep or, or, or go and work out. Like if it's one night, that's bad. You know, you can go work out, just reduce the intensity two nights. Eh, it's iffy. It's, you start to string three or so like, okay, like I got to get more sleep and just kind of let my body rest. Cause otherwise you're just going to push your body uh, too hard. But maps 15 is, is so well programmed for somebody who has yeah. got a, a lifestyle like yours. Okay. No, I appreciate that. And I've been eye on power lift for a while too. So I think once I get the sleep down, that'll be my next one. Oh, we'll yeah. send it to you. Oh, yeah. you guys got me hooked on the gym. I like that. I that'll like be that. Great for that's you. a, that's a great one to transition into when everything, when everything else is dialed in life as far as sleep, eating and stuff, but like use maps 15 right now to dial in the sleep and the diet, right? So be consistent. Your numbers for hitting 170, 180 grams of protein, keep it over 3,000 calories. Yep. Keep pushing that consistently. Keep working on getting your sleep, optimizing that. Once you feel like you got a really good rhythm with both of those, then transitioning into power lift, oh man. Yeah. <sighs> now, are you, uh, can you have dairy? Is dairy okay for you? Uh, no restrictions whatsoever. So I, yeah, good on dairy. I'll give you some really good like mass building meals. Yeah. Okay, eighty five percent ground milk, beef, milk with every meal. Yeah, eighty five percent ground beef with rice with some vegetables in a bowl, mixed together. Throw some salsa on that. It's like a really high calorie. Uh, relatively palatable meal. You could sprinkle cheese on it if you want. I love that one so much because you can make it in bulk for the night for the family. That's and exactly. The, and the leftovers, you turn around and you just throw an egg on top oh, yeah. of it. Oh, that's I, I would amazing cook breakfast. I would cook like a big old pan of like four pounds of, of yes. ground beef. Then I'd make a big pot of rice, and I then I'd get some frozen vegetables, put that in a pot, and then I'd make a bunch of bowls of that, and then you just warm it up in the microwave, add a little salsa if you want. And it's and they're super good, palatable, yeah. and it's high in calorie and protein. And then the other thing is, uh, literally throw have a eight to ten ounce glass of whole milk with every meal, and you will hit your calories. Very very simple. We're gonna be buying so much milk in this house with our two year old. <laughs> we, we blow through milk like no other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe buy a cow, nice bro. To drink a gallon like every <laughs> yeah. two days. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> might be a good investment. One yeah. cow. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. it, dude. And yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna 170. You're, you'll get there. Yes. You're already at 157. You said so. You went from 142, 157. Yeah, you're doing yep. good. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I, you guys talk about these newbie gains all the time, and I just, I, I feel like I'm not seeing them, but I know that's the what? process. Oh, I'm no, way bro, early bro. In the, what? Way early. In the how, wait, how, how long did it take you to go from 142 to 157? Uh, six months, six seven months, but then I plateaued. So I've that's, been. Yeah. I've been at this for the the remainder three, and that's kind of bro. You gained fi you gained fifteen pounds in six months yeah. of muscle, and that's newbie gains, bro. It ain't gonna happen like that yeah, forever. I'm just yeah, gonna tell you right yeah. now. In the, in the sleep factor, if we can get you to adjust to the fifteen style, is really yeah. gonna help unlock a little so, bit of that plateau. Those are the two things, okay? So the two things that are that are making the plateau right now is the the sleep in pairing with not consistently hitting the 3000 plus calories. Yeah. You've now reached a new maintenance level of calories you need. 
and your body always needs sleep and you're stressing yourself on the sleep and you're not feeding yourself enough, the combination yep. of that is equaling kind of a plateau the right body's now. body's kind of holding. You Once know? you, uh, and MAPS 15 is going to be perfect for you. That's going to bring down the intensity and volume of your training. So that's going to help with the, the sleep issue. Plus keep trying to work on it. And then just be consistent with those calories and protein and tr you'll yeah. like, you're going to bust right through that yeah. plateau. Yeah, you'll probably get another 10 to 15 in the yeah. next uh, nine months or so if you do that. Okay. I, that's what I wanted to hear. I appreciate it, guys. No, this has been awesome. You got it, man. I'd, I'd love for you to circle back with us after you run through Maps 15. I'd like to hear yeah, how, how that goes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'll be. I'll keep in touch, and uh, I'll do my before and after photos. Hell yeah. yeah. No, I would love that. And when you email back know. in, just put in the email follow up. If you, if you that way we move that way uh, Jerry knows that it was it's a follow up to somebody I told to follow up with us. Perfect. Okay. All right, Jordan. All right. Well, awesome guys. I really do appreciate it, and uh, keep doing what you do. You got it. Thank brother. you. Right on. Thanks for the commercial. Thank you. <laughs> yeah yeah take care you got it you know what's funny about the whole thing but he's crushing yeah. what's so funny about that okay is he gained because he's still lean i can see him by, by the camera he gained 15 pounds of lean body mass mostly yeah. probably probably yeah. mostly muscle. in a six-month period and he's yeah. like i don't know about these newbie gains like yeah. that's newbie gains bro yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if i could you imagine yeah, getting 15 pounds of muscle know, in yeah. six months i yeah. wish like yeah. oh, you know you know what Insane. i think i think what happened and i remember this too is like uh you know, 15 pounds is evenly distributed on your body. Yeah. Yeah. And so you think like, oh, I, I'm going to- It's man, not for I'm, you to see it, but everybody else, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? 100%, 100%. So, yeah. but he's doing really good. And, Hella good. And, and the hardest thing right here coming from a, being a skinny guy is as as you build muscle, the metabolism goes That's up. That's right. And so keeping up with the calorie, and then keeping up consistently, because then what? That's the it's it because you go yeah. high calorie for a few days, and, and then, then you, you, and you, you base know. it on hunger, but and then you yeah, have low misleading. calorie. Yeah, and then when two. you when you scale when you scale out, and you go oh. When I average the month, I'm actually only averaging 3,000. I haven't moved up to 3,400. I had a few days where I hit 34, 3,500, but then I came down to 2,700. Yep, and it's dude. like, so be know that consistently keep the just, calories up. Just keep wolfing it down. Yeah. <laughs> Good old I mean, I can't wait out, to, dude. Wolf I can't down, wait to hear, though. I, think, I do think Matt 15 is the answer for him. Totally. And, and then he goes calories up. And then I bet you we see it. It'd be cool to see him on the on the camera in three months and see if we could see it on him when, the next time he comes. <laughs> oh, he's got like no neck. He's yeah. like, oh, what's up, guys? Two <laughs> messages. Awesome. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Our next caller is Sam from Canada. Sam, what's up, man? How can Sam, we help you? Hey, what's happening, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Yo, yo. That is kind of tough to see on my phone, but I think your mustaches are coming in already. Yeah, Listen, yeah. That's tr nothing. I'm trying to get up to your level, it's dude. Nothing like yours. That's, yeah. <laughs> I feel uh, very insecure. A few more right months. One day, one day. Don't yeah. worry. Mm -hmm. Okay. What you got for us, Sam? Um, so I had a question about diagnosing specific weaknesses and imbalances. Um, so I, I have a couple of examples just to make it a little bit more clear what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'll just read my email if that's all right. Yep. Uh, so my first example is shoulder pain during lateral raise and overhead type movements that I had for years after a third degree separation of my AC joint. I went to physio to rehab it and the pain went away. And then after a few years, I tried to get into strength training and I kind of got into this cycle of training for a month and then the pain would make me have to stop and on and on and on. Uh, so I had both doctors and orthopedic surgeons tell me that because I had a six millimeter tear in my supraspinatus that I had to stop lifting. And I didn't want to listen to them. A trainer at my gym sent me to a physiotherapist who told me the tear had nothing to do with the pain. And it was poor recruitment patterns from uh, rotator cuff weakness because of the initial injury. So he gave me some specific uh, exercises to do. And then the pain went away and all my lifts went up. Uh, my second example is I kept getting heavier and heavier in my deadlifts. And then I started to feel like overactivation in my lower back or my upper glutes. Uh, not quite pain, but, you know, it would go away after maybe 20 minutes, but it made it difficult to continue working out and to, like, walk around. So I kept trying to adjust movements in my priming sessions and work on my form, and then I had to give up and just go back to the physiotherapist, and to him, he tells me the problem isn't my form, it's actually core weakness in comparison to the rest of my body to adequately support my spine with that much weight. So again, he gave me some pres prescribed exercises, and the problem went away. So I'm just kind of curious if you guys have any resources that you recommend and endorse for kind of diagnosing any of these things. Because I keep telling people how great my physiotherapist is, and it's becoming harder and harder to get appointments with him. You know, it sounds like you got a good yeah, one, though. Yeah, it sounds like you got a good point. one. Here's look. There's two ways you can handle this, uh, Sam. Option one is to continue training in the way that you train until something hurts. 
<laughs> and then you got to go and fix it and figure out what happened. Yeah. Option two is to cycle your training and before any injury happens, train differently, different planes of movement, uh, unilateral training, unilateral training would be huge. Uh, mobility based training, like do it on a regular basis before these issues occur. Cause if you stay to the, if you stick to a certain type of training for too long, your body gets really strong and really good at the movements that you train. But once that strength disparity between that movement and stabilizing it outside of that movement start to become too large, risk of injury starts to happen. So in other words, you could get yeah. too strong in one movement for your body to be able to support because you don't train outside that movement. Lo loading and having like a progressive overload kind of approach to like mobility drills that you do. Uh, and I mean, you've seen me do things with uh, the ending clubs or mace bells. I think the, the beauty of that is there's a way to add a bit of load to rotational movements and, and your joints need that. Uh, they need that kind of stimulus. So instead of just like, like Sal saying, like approaching it, like I'm going to train and then if there's a problem, now I'm going to go back and they kind of, you know, peer into that and try and strengthen it. And no, you, you, you proactively are adding these rituals of strengthening and, and training, um, you know, these types of movements. So that way, you know, you don't have to keep kind of coming back and trying to, to fill the holes. I mean, we're, I think we're giving you all these answers and assuming something without asking you. Uh, the question is, are you diagnosing specific imbalances to correct? Do you own prime and prime pro? So I own prime and I don't know if I'm using it properly because I keep doing the, the three zone tests and I come out of it and I'm just like, okay, everything. I guess I'm doing a hundred priming movements before every workout. No. Okay. So well, for, let's address that. And then I'll explain why prime, mm -hmm. pro, what prime pro is valuable to you. Cause prime pro goes through every major joint and then assesses that. And then if you have any sort any sort of imbalances, you're going to know when you so go like through that self diagnosis. Test. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you need to start and if so, if you notice something that you do, you do one of these tests and you fail the test, then you need to start incorporating the movements that are in there to help uh, to improve that range of motion, strength, and stability. So that program is designed to help diagnose. That's really what that is. Prime is going to set you up like at those those three main zones. If you fail the three main zones, it's not you need to do 100 of those exercises. We give people a bunch of exercises to choose from, but really you want to find one or two of them that m makes the biggest difference. So if, right. you, if okay. you, if yeah, if you fail... Let's say uh, you know zone one, and your uh, your your head's coming forward, and we have three or four priming movements for you to do in there. Do the one that you feel the most improvement, and do a lot of that as much as you possibly can all the time. You don't need to do a bunch of all those different different movements. You just need to choose one that is that is the most impactful in that zone, and then that needs to more importantly be something you do frequently throughout the day, not just once or just every once in a while or just on workout days. It's like that's that's showing you right now that there's already an imbalance going on because you're failing zone one. So we need to help g prevent what keeps happening to you because what yeah. keeps happening is you push through, get broken. The physio tells you, do these things to fix it. Well, if you self-diagnose with Prime and Prime Pro, it's going to point you in the directions of where these imbalances are, and you need to put that work in before the injury happens. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So that, that's so I, cause I, I started doing, so I moved out, I initially did anabolic, and then I moved into strong, and that's when I started to feel a lot of it. So then I, I did do performance. Uh, I did a few weeks of hit, uh, just so I could have something similar to work out with my wife. And now I'm in the second week of the first phase of symmetry because I kind of thought maybe that that's would help. One. Perfect. That's the one. Yeah, that is the one. That's that's the program. And then if you were like to 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 feel like you've you've definitely strengthened all of these imbalances and you're kind of on the right path, you know, something like an old time strength would really <laughs> challenge you to the degree of of what you've established in terms of strength stability around the joints. So, um, you know, that's just one of those like underrated programs that now. Uh, if your goal was to, to be strong and, and to, to not keep having to revisit a lot of these issues, I think that would be a good option. I, I'm going to have Doug send over prime pro since you don't have that. So you have prime pro. Oh, wow. And then what I would oh, like you, you. what I'd cool. like you to do, Sam, is to go through all of the test and I'm more than likely you're going to see one or two of them that really jump out at you whether that's a shoulder thing, an ankle, you're going to notice some uh, one or two things. You're like, oh, wow, this is really difficult for me to do, or I can't do this at all. Yeah. And that is your red flag that this is an area 
I need to put work in, or if I don't, eventually it's going to result in me getting hurt. Mm -hmm. So that's how you use okay. Prime Pro. Use Prime Pro, kind of go through all of them, really pay attention. And this is how I coach to it, right? You might fail six of the tests and have a hard time with it, but pick the one that's the most egregious, right? That's normal. It's totally normal. And this is where it can become overwhelming is everyone's like, oh my God, all of yeah. these I'm where failing. Where do I even begin now? Yeah, where do I begin? So it's like, pick the one. Uh, and most likely for you, it's going to be shoulder scapula area, I'm going to guess, right? And so, and really hone in into that area and get good at those movements and watch how it benefits you in your training. And then as you as that builds into your routine, then add another one and do it that way versus getting overwhelmed with all these exercises. Pick an area that seems egregious, focus on that area and the movements that we recommend to help fix that and really dive into it, do it religiously. And then once it, be, once it becomes something that is routine, then you can move on to the next one. Okay, would I do that instead of my workout program I'm doing now or like with Symmetry, I have foundational days and then like mobility days. Would I replace the mobility days with this or... No, this is on top of it. This is like, so l let's say you, we, we decide it's like a shoulder thing. And I, what's a good example? Uh, wall circles and uh, what's another good example? Sca scapular Scapular circles, wall okay, circles. So yeah. wall circles and uh, like handcuff with rotation, well, right? Go, Th yeah. These are going to be like two movements it's going to recommend for that, that area, right? I want you to do that every time you think about it. In, inside of your workout, outside of your workout, because we're, we're trying to work on a recruitment pattern, like your physio is explaining to you, and improve it. Right. And that means frequency all the time. It's not, it's, don't think of it as a workout. Think of it more like rehab. You're in practice. Yeah, it's more like, okay. yeah, it's not like, you're not supposed to be like training, trying to get sore from it. You're trying to train the body to this become the new default yep. pattern. And the, the way you're going to do that is to do it as frequently as possible. So every time you have a little- 20 minutes. Yes, yeah, all day. All, every, whenever yeah. you think about it, right? Just like practicing it constantly. Yeah, most certainly before you work out. You definitely want to do it before you work out. But you, I would love to see you do it two, three times a day, uh, all the time. Just even if it, if oh, okay. like I said, get down for five minutes and just do that movement, and then go about your day or if, what, break up your day and work. I don't know what you do for a living, but you know maybe get a break every couple hours. Do those movements. Like just be mindful of it and practicing that uh, throughout the day, and that's how you use those movements. Okay, great. That's really, really great. Uh, I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to answer my question. Uh, the information and the messaging that you guys put out is, is really great. I, I'm really grateful to have this opportunity. Thanks. I awesome. appreciate it, man. Awesome, Thank you. Sam. Yeah, we're going to send that over to you, bro. I, I'd love to hear back how it's going for you, too. Yeah, I'll shoot you an email in a couple months. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome, Sam. Take it easy. Yeah, thank you, guys. I got you. it. Yeah, the... Um, it's a common issue, right? You, people who work out for a long time, they'll go, 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 go. Injury will pop up, and they have to go back yep. and fix it. There is a way to avoid that, and the way to avoid it is to train differently mm -hmm. on a regular basis. That's hard, though, because we all like training a particular way so you much. got to weave it in there. Yeah, and it's like you got to do the thing that you're not doing to avoid those issues, especially you, if you've been doing this for you a You know while. what, Doug? Um, can you make a note for this? Uh, for the audience, Um we have this thing we're going to start doing and it's going to be designed for coaches and trainers, but I want to be, I want anybody to be available to watch this. Like I think one of the good topics, Sal, that we could do, because I think this is common with prime and prime pros, like how to use it, how to yeah, assess yourself. Yeah. And we could do a talk on that. It'll help the trainers and it'll help anybody who's going through it, trying to self -diagnose. definitely requires the most instruction. Right. It mm -hmm. does. And it, and I know it can be overwhelming sometimes because then people fail and they're like, Oh my God, I have to do all these movements. And so I, I think a, a deep kind of dive uh, on that would be a really good webinar that we could do uh, on a monthly basis. So let's, let's put that down as a note. Look, if you like mind pump, go to mindpumpfree.com. We have a hard gainer guide. If you have trouble building muscle, you want to pack on mass, Check out the free hard gainer guide. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.